Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double up, yo. I'm Sugar Ray Robinson, pound for pound the best. And you overprotected, never been in no real test. Mike Tyson eat your kids for lunch. I'm like really Pep, I could win around without throwing a punch. Lennox Lewis had a glass jaw. If my grandmother hit him on the chin, he probably hit the floor. The road of Duran, all time greatest lightweight. Prince Nassim was whack, all the hype was fake. Leon Spinks was the ultimate slacker. Sugar Ray Lennon was great, but he should have lost to Hagler. The seven D's had the best heavyweights. Molly Fraser to George Foreman, there was so many greats Bob Foster hit way too hard You would have put Antonio Tarver and Roy Jones in the graveyard Some of y'all might disagree But Larry Holmes might have been the best Even better than Ali Greatest Puerto Rican fighter, Carlos Ortiz Runner up with Fredo Gomez in the early 80s Worst Puerto Rican fighter is John Luis Winky Wright beat Shane Mosley, two times for these Learned that Whitaker was robbed so many different occasions Mike McCallum represented hard for the Jamaican Costa soon made jab through the funky chicken Years later, Ricky Hatton had Costa Zoo quitting I ran Barkley, rep the VX Christy Martin was the first popular fighter of the opposite sex A lot of punch, Riddick Bowe repeatedly in the dick Then when he fought Mike Tyson, he bitched out and quit James Tony was a skilled technician Jack Johnson beat white boys and fucked their women Floyd Patterson got knocked out by Sonny Liston Only a yellow always seemed to get the gift decision A Toro Caddy take the best ass whipping Jim Lampley and the rest of the HBO cheerleaders do the most ass kids They jerk Bernard Hopkins ruined his 10 year reign They stole his belts from him, gave him to Jermaine But Sealy Giroff nearly murdered Joe Macy Joe Calzaghe annihilated Jeff Lacey John Mugabe nickname was the Beast Corrales Castillo, the first fight was a masterpiece Julian Jackson crushed Terry Norris We all got knocked out for us Hearns Hagler taught us what the war is Trying to find the next heavyweight great They thought it was Ibea Bucci, but he went to jail Bob Abrams a weasel and Don King's evil Floyd Mayweather's good but he need to fight better people We watched Oscar De La Hoya get rich He nearly outpointed Felix Trinidad but then he ran like a bitch Barrera Morales, Julio Cesar Chavez Mexican fighters was fucking up mad heads And we never got to see the best Salvador Sanchez Ricardo Lopez retired undefeated Larry Holmes beat Michael Spinks but he got Many Pacquiao speed is heated, believe it to be Oliver McCall smoked crack and had a nervous breakdown Riddick Bow knocked out Holyfield in the eighth round Jake LaMotta had the best chin When Mike Tyson beats Spinks was his best win They stopped 15 round fights after Duck Who Kim The biggest disappointment was probably gold medalist Mark Breland Emil Griffith was accused of hanging out with queers Tony Ayala went to jail for 16 years Michael Grant swore pitifully Vito Antifermo was a champ from Italy Chris Bird beat Vitaly Fernando Vargas' best win was Ike Corte Who fought the best competition? Juan Laporte Levander Johnson killed in the ring R.I.P. Tommy Morrison was diagnosed with HIV First round Ernie Shavers finished Kenny Norton Michael Dokes and Tony Tucker was both Coke Snorton Coke Snorton Coke Snorton Coke Snorton Coke Snorton Coke Snorton I hope you guys are listening in If you are, go ahead and add the Box Union on Skype um, And go ahead and call in, man We got Boxing Beats and Rhymes on the line, I believe What's up, my man? Yo, what's up? What's up, Beats? You hear me? Yeah, good to have you yeah, on, man Yeah, brother, what's going on? Big, big fan of your work, I like your channel, man Good, good channel. Good channel on YouTube, people. So if you're listening, Boxing Beats and Rhymes, hit that channel. I mean, you can sit and listen to the guy for hours. Good channel. Hell yeah. I appreciate it. What's up, Beats? Oh, what do you think of this weekend's fights, man? What you want to talk about, brother? Who are you talking about? Pascal and, and the overhyped Boutte. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you think about that, man? Yeah, he was over. I, I always, I, I knew he was overhyped before Frosh. I, I tip Frosh to beat him. Tip Frosh to beat him. I tip Pascal to beat him. I, I never, never rated the guy. Never rated him. Never rated him. When I saw that that Andrade, the referee did. Man, he, and from that, I, I knew it from then, man. I knew it from then. Yeah, I hear you, man. I, I agree with you. I think Butte was always overhyped. Yeah, um, way overhyped. Uh, what do you expect from the winner, Pascal? You know, do you think he's gonna get any big fights? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, well, he, uh, he he's got a few options. He's got a few options. I think he should. He might hang in there. Hopkins. Um, who's that? The the European guy who begins with B. That what's his name? Interim. What's his name? Oh, you've got um, me as well. Shubinov. No, no, is it no. Shubinov? 
Shoot, yeah, Shimanoff, yeah. Shimanoff. Shimanoff, yeah. Shimanoff is um, fighting Hopkins next, I believe, Beats, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. yeah he's, he's got options, man. Like, he's a big, he's a, like, he's a, he's an entity, he's a value for money fighter, you know, he's beat Dawson, he's been in there, hop, drop Hopkins twice. He, he can get high profile fights, he can get big money fights, you know. I don't know if yeah, he'll go in there with Kovalev. Yeah, I agree. They'll probably try to get him in there with Stevenson for another big Canadian showdown, you know. Oh, we've got some feedback. No, he's not going to fight Stevenson. He's not going to fight Stevenson. Sir. Sorry, we've got some feedback. Have you got a, the mixer on in the background, Beats? Just uh, trying, I'm trying to work out where, where the echoes come from. Is it coming from my end? Yeah, I think, have, you, have you got the Boxing Union mixer on? What's the boxing union? Oh, sorry, chat? you probably haven't got the chat on, but yeah, I thought you'd have the chat because that that gives a feedback, but obviously you haven't. So it's cool when you talk. It's just when when you don't, there's a, there's a little bit of a, a feedback. But c c carry on, okay. carry on, mate. Yeah, he's not going to fight Stevenson because they're they're brothers from Haitian from Haitian descent. So I don't think they're going to go for that. Mm. That's what but you're do, saying. But do you believe in that though? Do you think that's how fighters should go? about it you know this is a business at the end of the day beats you know you're in an entertainment business you, you know man united players can't say well i'm i'm best friends with the tottenham players so i don't want to play them this week you know this is a business we're in what do you think of that do you think well you boxing's know? a maverick mercenary sport isn't it it's that's yeah. what it is really so maybe if the if they threw enough money at both of them they might do it they might do it but Boxing makes up its rules as it goes along. Well, this, That's is, what it. It does. this is what I was just talking about, Bob Arum. I mean, this guy's a disgrace to the sport. I mean, as soon as he gets out, the better, really. I mean, he's making up his rules, making up these ridiculous fights for us. And it's time, you know, the internet, and the internet, the press, everyone else stood up to him and, you know, stopped buying his cards. Like I said, like you say on your videos, Beat, stream them, mate, stream them. And that's what <laughs> no, I don't, I, I, I don't say stream everything. It, it, like... What I say is, like, I say certain fights are streamers and certain fights are no streamers. Yeah. yeah. So if you put on a good card, like, to me, um, Danny Garcia versus Matisse, Floyd versus Canelo, that was a good card. Like, you know, I wouldn't stream that. I I'd want to pay for that. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that's the sort of card where you, didn't, you don't need the stream cutting out on you yeah. round one no you? that's right that's right so yeah, so, yeah I, well, you know would you pay if Amir Khan Floyd I mean what would you call that stream or no streamer I think the fight is more valuable in Britain than in America but it's, it's uh, that's a stream you, you should stream that yeah I mean you can stream that one I think a lot of um Golovkin's opponents are streams <laughs> oh, well this is it I mean From back to Curtis Stevens yeah. Ashida, they're stream fights, man. They're stream fights. You've got to be crazy to pay pay per view for a Golovkin fight at the moment. You've got to be nuts. Yeah. You must have money just to throw away because you know. Let's be real, Rosado is not pay per view quality. But um, yeah, th with this um, pay per view, obviously with Khan. I mean, th if they put Brown and Madonna two on that undercard, would you would you pay for it then? That has more appeal. Yeah. That is more appeal. Yes. See, I agree. I agree. That Khan Mayweather is hard. It's going to be hard to sell unless you put a big undercard fight like Madonna. Well, Marvin Hagler, he said that it should be in the UK. He said Floyd should fight Khan in the UK. That's what he said. Yeah. And that's my favorite. Oh, and fight. I, I so agree 100%. If Hagler said yeah, it, I mean, then it's true. Don't yeah, I mean, I agree the fight should happen in the UK, man. I mean, that's the only way to me that it actually makes any sense because obviously, uh, you know, Americans aren't really valuing it. I think it would be huge over there, be bigger over there. And, and for Mayweather's brand, it, it's, it's a better move, you know. And obviously, you know, in the UK, they know how to put on a great, a great event. We saw the Frotch Groves fight. Uh, you know, this fight is it's huge in the, in the UK. And at least guys in America who don't know a lot about Khan – they're going to say, wow, well, Mayweather's going all the way to the UK. He's going in this guy's backyard. They're going to get interested just based on that. So just for the sake of interest for the fight, I think it's huge. And Mayweather's at a point at, 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 that what's a couple million dollars pay-per-view money to him? What, what does that really matter? I mean, this guy, he's made so much money. I think that it would be great if he does it. Um, I mean, it's probably going to happen in, 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 the, in you know, the MGM Grand. 
But I mean, heck, if it happens in in the UK, man, I think that just makes it a little bit more interesting, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't see Floyd ever leaving Las Vegas. You know, the guy's got Las Vegas on lockdown. Whatever he wants, he gets. Why is he going to come to England and risk getting robbed? I mean, it's just not going to happen, yeah, is it? That's right. That's right. That's right. You know? Yeah, you see, and that, that's another thing as well. You know, obviously with the, some of the controversial decisions that have happened, um, it, it just probably makes you know, a guy like Mayweather a little bit more nervous going to the UK, you know, which is unfortunate. So hopefully, um, you know, and it's not just in the UK. I mean, it's not act like it's just over there. We get bad decisions. There's bad decisions over here as well. It's just a problem in boxing that needs to be sorted out. Um, it, it's just the fact that these promoters have a ton of power, man, and, and they get the right people in place, you know. So, you know, hopefully uh, in 2014, you don't have to deal with that. Boxers don't get bullied these days. That's what it is. They don't get bullied. That's why, you know, you ain't going to see Frutch take on Gross. Yeah. He's not going to get bullied into tech. Why is he going to... I mean, from his, 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 from his viewpoint, he'd rather fight Chavez, somebody hittable, can make big money, than bout the game and keep that pretty wife and the pretty thing she likes. You I know said I mean? exactly the same thing. I said the Chavez fight is the one that Frotch would look for. Why is he going to fight a young lion like Groves, who has far more ability than he does, that can hurt him, and it's only going to get better? I mean, it just don't make sense for Carl Frotch. Yeah, let's, that's let's, right. Unless he yeah. wants to cash out on his career. But like you said, Beats, this this guy's getting on now. I mean, uh, George Groves is the sort of guy that could hurt you, t- take a bit, bit of damage on, on you, do you know what I mean? And take a few years off look, your life. Man, look, look. Do you know what I mean? By the time he fights Groves again, Groves is going to, like, you see, boxing's a short career. So a, a boxer, his maturity growth, it, it, it can happen in a short spurt. Like, from that fight there, in three months' time, George Groves is a totally different beast, right? Exactly. He he knows he can get into the late round, rounds. He's gonna be, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, man, like, I wouldn't take If I was French, I wouldn't take the fight. I wouldn't take it. I don't think he will either, mate. I, I really don't. It. It's I mean, a dangerous I'm... fight, man. It really is. Uh, let me get Ryan in on this. Ryan, you there? What's up, my man? Yeah, how's it going? It's hey, guys. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, we got Eamon. We got Eamon hey, as well. We, we got, got both of you guys. Got, Maybe you guys, Eamon. why don't you all uh, chime in on this? Who do you want to talk? Ryan, go on. Do you go first? Then Eamon can go. All right, can you hear me, guys? Yeah. All right, cool. So what do you want to talk about? Well, the boxing. Obviously, oh, we- you watched the boxing weekend, didn't you, Ryan? Uh, hang on, re- refresh my memory. Oh, what the Jean Pascal fight, uh, Butte? Yeah, it it wasn't it wasn't all that good, was it? Um, I wasn't really. I didn't watch it live because I fell asleep about two in the morning, and uh, so I had to watch the next day. But people on my boxing page warned me not to bother watching it. It was a bit dull. It wasn't all that great. I thought it would probably be a bit more exciting. I thought Pascal might, you know, um, edge a late stoppage victory. Uh, I thought he might have pressured him more. I thought he might have made a little bit more of an effort. But all in all, it was, you know, it wasn't a great night of boxing, really. But then, you know, I that's think that fight was tough. I think it was, I, I didn't think, think it was, was, you know. Dull. Did you say you thought it was really good? It was good? a strange fight. It was, I don't yeah. think it was dull. It was a strange fight. I don't think it was dull. No, I don't, I don't think... On, yeah, I don't think the the show the show itself I didn't think was all that great. But you know, some some weekends you get fantastic boxing with loads and loads and loads, and other times you know it's not all that great. I, th- I think the know, problem with Canada. Week. I think the problem with Canada, Ryan, it's a bit like Germany. You, you could put the two best fighters in the world in there, and then the you know the atmosphere is just not there. And I think that was the problem with Boutte and and Pascal. I mean, like like it, they, it was exciting at times, but. The atmosphere was dull. It, you know, it, I could see where you're coming from. I can, but I can also see where. Yeah, I mean, like we've been we've been spoiled for choice really this year because I mean we've had some cracking fights this year. So and you know every year every year in boxing you got loads and loads of cracking fights that come along. Some years a few more than others. So I think you know sometimes we just get spoiled as boxing fans. We just remember the the really great fights and then when we see like I remember when James De Gale and George Groves fought. And, you know, we were thinking, oh, this is going to be such a great fight. And then it wasn't all that great all, uh, at all. As opposed to, say, George Groves versus Carl Frotch, which was, you know, one of the fights of the year. 
So, you know, I think sometimes like, when you look at like Pascal and Boutte, you think, yeah, two Canadians in Canada, uh, good sort of mesh of styles. One's a pressure fighter, the other one likes to fight on the back foot, uh, you know, and then you just expect the best fight in the world. Yeah, and, you know, not even just that. Mm -hmm. Our problem with some of the cars that the Canadians put on is just that, um, you know, some of those uh, th those fights, the preliminaries are so boring, man. You just can't really get hyped on it, you know. I mean, uh, sometimes the best thing you can look forward to is, is a, a David Lemieux fight, you know. So I just don't think that they're that stacked in Canada. And I think they need to start incorporating other countries into their cards. Like, you could have a big Canadian card, get have some nice Canadian showcases on there, but... Let's be honest. I mean, nobody's really coming to see a lot of those guys anyway. So why not put different fighters from different countries on there and just get a good card? You know, make other people. I'm sure there's plenty of American and UK fighters or German fighters who wouldn't mind coming I, to I Canada disagree, and fighting. Guys, man. I disagree. Like um, the, the thing, the Stevenson, Belou, Kovalev, Selak, and then you had that guy who fought Jojo Dan, the, the prospect. There. That was a good card. Yeah. That was a good card to me. I that, thought it was a good was, card. That was a good card. I'll, I'll give you that one. That was a good card. But that card, that, yeah. that card wasn't a bad card, beats. I agree with you on that. But I'm just saying, like for me, like this last card, I'm gonna kind of agree with Ryan. Other than the main event, the main events and the co-main events, great. But for this past card, I just don't think. I think it could have been a lot better if they could have brought some other guys on from from just different countries and not just try to stick to the Canadian team. I, I just think I, it could have been a better card. You know, that's just me. You know. Yeah, but it's Canada, man. They have to I'm, promote their own talent. Man. You can't, you can't hold a bill in your own country and then just import other people. You got, you got to build up your own talent, your own backyard. And to be fair, Eddie Hearn does the same thing over here, doesn't he? So yeah, you're right, Beef. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these fight fighters that Eddie Hearn has on his cards, I mean, they're not going to get fights anywhere else, are they? Let's be real. So yeah, I, I could see where he's coming from. Canada are short of fighters, and the ones they have got. They have got a build. I mean, they need to start getting behind this Lat Lemu because he he does look a good fighter. He's a banger, isn't he? He's a you know he goes for the kill, and that's what a lot of people like to see. So that, that's another one they could um, build up. I mean, obviously they've got a lot of Haitians, ha ha whatever they're called, from Haiti going over to Canada, and they, they've got some good fighters. So uh, you know, Canada is on the rise. But I agree with Ryan. The, the card was a bit lacklustered last night. I thought, and that's probably yeah. I, I actually thought. <laughs> I thought the card actually looked quite good. Like, the, like Butte Pascal looked good. Like I said, that like that, that had sort of like you know Canada versus Canada. It was an intriguing fight. And uh, Mike Perez versus um, what's his name, the African heavyweight. Takam. What was his opponent? Sorry. Takam. I Takam. Oh, Take 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 yeah, Takam. Yeah, Takam. Either that looked quite a good fight as well, like on paper, and uh, the other fight. Uh, Oh, God, I can't remember the Canadian guy's name now. But the, the, there looked to be three good fights on that card, and I thought there would probably be three knockouts, and there were three points mm -hmm. decisions. And, of course, as boxing fans, I think people generally want to see knockouts, you know, in general, they, or at least an explosive fight with sort of um, stoppage potential type of thing. You know, most most people aren't watching boxing to see the Pernal Whiskers of the world or whatever, the vast majority of fans. Um so I mean that never happened, but all it, but the actual the card itself looked quite good. I thought the card was going to um, be a lot better. So it was just the fact that the fights just never sort of went quite the way that maybe fans expected them to. You see what you said about yeah, that's a good point. Boxing fans, okay. What you said about boxing no, fans ahead, wanting to see what? No, about boxing fans just wanting to see knockouts is actually. I don't know. I've got a theory. I think it's to the detriment of the sport, if that's all you want to see. Because what I'm, what I'm noticing now, there's there's a couple of ways that, they can, that, that they're marketing fans. Despite what everybody says, they want to see the best fight the best. You know, they know how to market boxing to you. And that's just quantity. So they either get two guys throwing a whole load of punches, you get quantity that way, or they'll market you against easy to hit guys and okay let him fight five times a year and bang over five people in a year you know and to a degree i'm not going to mention the fighters who've done that they're, they're, I, i've got them in my head but i'm not going to say the name and that's all they're doing now and i think that them same fighters who could do it they're going to do that again this year you know i might as well mention one of them 
And that's Golovkin. He's fight, this guy he's fighting here, the, the African guy, how is he getting a shot at the world title? Mm-hmm. You, anyone, I'll tell you what, right? Name, tell me, so I want somebody without touching their computer to tell me who Golovkin took the title of. <laughs> that's a good question, Bates. Hey, I, don't, I don't think anybody can. Well, I don't think anybody can. I yeah, agree with he, you on he, that, though. I really do. Because didn't he take... Didn't he take like a WBA interim and then he was upgraded from interim to like bullshit champ and the super champ, of course, was Felix Sturm. So, yeah, I, I don't know who, who he took, the, but I'm pretty sure he, he won. He, I, think, I think I think Sturm takes up. Sorry. Go on. Go on, no, um, Eamon. What, no. go, what was you saying, mate? I think I didn't. Didn't Sturm step aside because he didn't want to fight him. So therefore, the, the, he, he got like there was some bullshit match set up. That's right. Like a, he, he, that's yeah. right. I think it was Prosca. It was oh. Prosca, wasn't it? I'm not sure. Yeah, about I can't it. remember who. I know Sturm. I know Sturm avoided him like the plague. You see, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to keep. What they're going to do is get. Is she? 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 Is and uh, what they're going to do with him, they're going to keep him visible. They're going to keep him busy. But with guys, you know, who are probably relatively fairly strong, but easy to hit fighters who, you know, he can put away. And that's how they're going to keep building him up as a knockout artist. And it's a clever strategy. It's definitely a clever strategy. But it's no more than that. It's, you know, there, there'll be no push to get Martinez in the ring. There'll be no push for him to go up to 168 and challenge somebody up there. He doesn't even have to fight Ward. He can fight Saki or Bigger. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like he wants to go up to um, 167. That's for sure. I mean, he's he's ducked the question a few times. He said his business for him at 160. But I don't know where this business is because no one wants to fight him at 160. So, I mean, Martinez, I can't see taking that fight. He's getting on a bit now. And I just don't think that's a good good move for him. I mean, Val, you, you um, Eamon... You you hate Golovkin, don't you? So you you get in on this one. Oh, well, I don't. Just I can really I can really appreciate how good he is. But I mean, it's just I mean, it's uh, listen. The guys that come out and you're like sharks, Matisse, the likes of old Mike Tyson, uh, Golovkin. I always want to see him getting beat because they 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 play the role of the bad guy. They hunt people down in the ring, you know. And you just want to see somebody catch him. That's you. Know, I don't hate him, hate him, you know. But uh, what was I going to say again? Um. I just want to say a couple of things. Somebody was talking about um, Groves and Frotch and why take the take a dangerous fight like that. Um, five million pounds against two million dollars. That's the reason. And and I mean nobody's going to take his, his legacy seriously if he doesn't go and fight him again and win win decisively. Um, and there's well, just another inter- interesting. That's, that's not true. That's that's not true, man. Like he's proved himself. Part? Like he's went on the road. Like, if he ducks the last guy who gave him, that's not going to hurt his legacy. That won't hurt his legacy. They'll just say, okay, this you... is a, he came up against one young lion, and, and you know, he, he fought against, I mean, you can't negate his whole career because, yeah, because I, of one I, decision. I think with boxing fans, I think while they're still fighting, we like to pimp, and we like to, you know, say, oh, he ain't done this, and he ain't done that. It's only when they retire a few years is when we start to respect them. I mean, Lennox Lewis is, is one of my favourite fighters. That guy used to get so much shit, and I used to think, why are you giving this... This guy is one of the best heavyweights of all time, and yet people used to really? nitpick at him and say, oh, he's not got this, or he's not a killer, or oh, he's got a dodgy chin, and now he's been retired yeah. all these years. Everyone, no one's got a bad word to say about him. Oh, what a great fighter Lennox Lewis was. We're very fickle boxing fans, and they annoy me a little bit. You know, and it'd be just... sorry, Beats, go on. I'm, sorry, sorry. Keep, you see, I'm glad you brought up Lennox Lewis because he's in a similar position to Grove. They said, well, why isn't he rematching Klitschko after the last fight? They said that's going to hurt his leg. He should fight him to tie up his legacy. But he, you know, he didn't. He knew. He knew if he fought Vladimir, I mean, Vitali again. He'd be in another war. He'd be in a severe war. Yeah, and he'd be a better Vitali next time. I mean, he Lennox Lewis had lost his love for the sport. Let's be real. He's a multi-millionaire. The man likes to chill yeah. on the beach in Jamaica and smoke weed. Let's be honest. He did even when he was in his prime. Um, he, he just had... He, he'd lost his love for the sport. And 
Vitaly Klitschko was a hu young, hungry lion coming through that was only going to get better. Lennox Lewis did the right thing. All right, he got called a ducker for a few months, but we've all forgot about that now. Look at Vitaly Klitschko's exactly. face. Look at Vitaly Klitschko's face. I mean, the man had about 250 exactly. stitches in it. So what has Lennox Lewis got to prove? Just go and look. Just go and Google Vitaly Klitschko's face after Lennox Lewis' face, and you tell me Lennox Lewis has got something to prove. Carl Frost just yeah, and let me just chime in on that now. really quickly. Yeah, sir. Yeah, and just to chime in on that, I think another problem that we have besides you know, boxing fans just being fickle, I mean, everyone's at a point where we don't want to see a fighter lose, and we can't accept if a fighter loses him still being a great fighter. So that gets in certain guys' heads, and these fighters, they understand that, hey, if we lose, we're going to lose a tremendous support from the fans. We're going to have to deal. I mean, look at guys like Adrian Broner, what he's having to deal with right now. I mean, that's just kind of what happens. So these guys get in this mode to where they don't want to risk losing. And uh, you bring up Lennox Lewis. What would have happened to him if he did lose the rematch? You know, that would have hurt him a little bit, his legacy. So now he goes out on top. He got the victory. He's all right. Same thing with Frotch. I mean, if he gets back in there with Groves, I mean, no matter what you think about the Groves and Frotch fight, Frotch won. He won the fight. The referee stopped the fight. Carl Frotch is the winner. He moves on. So if Frotch was to go back in there and then he gets battered by George Groves in a rematch, that's going to hurt his legacy more than probably not taking the fight, I think. So, you know, ultimately, I think that uh, it's probably better for him to not take the fight. You know, obviously, as a boxing fan, I'd love to see it. But strategy-wise, I mean, it's, it's a tough fight. It's a very tough fight, and he knows it. Well, this is what I said to you, Joker. I mean, a lot of people were having a little dig at me because I said I didn't want to see that fight again. Only because I, I like UK fighters. We ain't got many great fighters at the moment. I don't want to see our best fighters beating lumps out of each other. I just don't want to, I think, that like Beach said, Foch is getting on a bit now. He's got a lovely wife, a lovely family. Does he need to be slurring and can't string a sentence together like Riddick Bow because he took one fight too many that he shouldn't have done? I mean, let's be real. Chavez Jr. is a lot easier fight for Foch than George Groves is. He'll murder Chavez. And that, that's big money for him. He can get the same money fighting Chavez as he can Groves, I should think. Probably a bit less, but less risk. That's the fight I'd take well, if I was fighting. Wouldn't you have to be watching way to fight Chavez? There's no way Chavez can fight at 160 again. 167, I mean, isn't it? I don't, it's 168. 168. Yeah, 168, sorry. 168, sorry, yeah. Because Chavez made 168. Well, that's it. This is what he's saying. I mean, against Frotch, he'd have to. I mean, because he'd lose a lot of his purse if he didn't. I mean, this is not, you know, Rodriguez we're dealing with. Um, sorry, not uh, Rodriguez. Um, Vera we're dealing with now. This is Carl Frotch. You're going to have to come in on weight. On, on the limit, or you lose your purse, or the fight could be called off. Frotch is a, is a clever businessman. He's not going to go in there with a £220 Julio Cesar Chavez, is he? So um, I think there'll be strict rules on the on the, on the the weight on that one because Chavez takes a piss when it comes to that. See, but if they hold that fight in Mexico, in California or somewhere, man, you might not get a decision out there, man. <laughs> well, we did speak, we did you know speak about this, didn't we, Joko? We thought... Uh, Frotch is going to have to put a bootay beating on him to get a decision over there, isn't he? Well, uh, yeah, because, I mean, let's look at it this way. We saw Brian Vera clearly beat Chavez Jr., and it wasn't enough. You know, obviously, we know Carl Frost could put it on Chavez more than Brian Vera can. But ultimately, I mean, Chavez, I mean, the guy's got a lot of pull with the WBC. Um, he's had for years. So, uh, you know, that's the guy that they're trying to, uh, to, to, to make sure that they keep him moving forward, man. And he's been in some terrible robberies before. And uh, if that theme continues, it's going to be a dangerous fight for Frotch as well, like y'all bring up, man. So we'll just have to see. What's your opinion on that, Yuma? Yuma, are you still with us? Yeah, yeah, about what? About Frotch Groves. About Frotch Groves. Where do you think Frotch should go on that? Should, do you think you should take Chavez or would you do you prefer the Frotch fight? Uh, the Groves fight, sorry. Uh, the most honourable thing to do is to give George, um, George a rematch, you know, because uh, you know he he he's a young man and and he he got robbed out of his glory in last occasion. So definitely, I mean, as as a from a fighter's perspective, you know, I mean, uh, I, I I really you know hope that Carl Frost will give a rematch to George. He definitely deserves that, you know, because he was winning the fight, you know, and the. The stoppage was completely, you know, complete crap, to be honest. So, yeah. Joker? But what? 
Yeah, man, I agree with you. I agree with I you. Agree uh, Umar, go ahead and mute yourself, my, my friend. Got getting a little bit of feedback from you, Umar. But yeah, yeah, I agree with you, man. I think that uh, you know Chavez, he's been in some bad decisions, so it's gonna it's gonna be risky. We'll see, man. Um, we'll see what the the public does, what they demand for Frotch next. I know Eddie Hearn is trying to make the uh, Frotch Groves rematch for, for the summer, but uh, I don't know. Like Beats and and you say Stewart, I, I just I'm not sure if I really see it happening. So um, we'll we'll just have to see, man. But uh, hopefully it does, cause it was a tremendous fight. You know, and hopefully we get some big like that in boxing again, because to me, man, that was one of the most memorable fights of uh, 2013 for me. You know, I mean, the atmosphere was crazy. It was so intense. So uh, a yeah. great fight. Yeah, can I just ask Beats a question while, he, while we've got him? Um, what's your opinion on this Broner Madonna 2 Beats? Do you think that's that's what Bro Broner should go for? Or would you like to see him um, take an easier fight and build himself up again? Because I want him to oh, fight. I want him to. Me too. I want him to fight Madani. He's, you know, he's he's built his name up. He got an ass whooping. And the only way you can put that right is by doing a number on Madonna. Anything else, I'm not going to be yeah, happy with it. Yeah. Boxing's a gamble. Bo boxing. He, he has to go for it. Like if that's, you see, it's no point in people trying to change Broner. Broner's going to have to be arrogant, flashing, and if he gets his head kicked in for that in the ring, that's how it goes. You know. I think he's a confidence <laughs> guy. He wants to get his confidence back. And, you know, you will just have to go in there and, and try his best. It's a 50-50 fight. It's a 50-50 in my opinion. I think Broner can make a few adjustments, but he's up against a big puncher at a weight that he's relatively foreign to. He's the third fight at world to weight, so he, he, should, he should be able to do a little bit. But, yeah, he's doing the right thing. He's doing the right thing. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I agree. He's he's not gonna lose that. He's not gonna lose that tag until he beats Madonna. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the first fight, he was heavily favoured to win. So you know, that that if he doesn't make that right, it's gonna stain his career. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I mean, I, I believe this kid's got the talent. I really do. I just think it's attitude problem with him. I mean, if we, if you could just tune into that little brain of his. Which is very small, by the way. If they, they can tune into to that and and get him <laughs> and, and, and just get him get him dedicated and using his ability, because this kid's a natural talent. He's got you know such a talent. He's wasting it by being a rap. I mean, I heard his I heard his tune the other day. I mean, I think it was on the box. But it was dreadful. This guy's just not a rapper. Stick to what you know. Stick to what you're good at. You I don't know. think it's the rapping, man. I, I don't think I, what it is, man. If you see a guy with a big beard up. I mean, his gut looks swollen when I saw it. Like, if, if you don't get your your regime and your diet right, then yeah, you're just going to affect you. And he he paid the he paid a heavy penalty for it. I think he underestimated Maidana's power, and if he does that again, yeah, he might get knocked out. This exactly. time, but you know. But I don't think the bottles of Moe help as well. You know what I mean? When he's out drinking and just acting a complete tool. I mean, he, he needs to he needs to um, book his ideas up, get in the gym, and uh, just dedicate the next few months to beat Madonna's ass, and I believe he can do it. Well, it'll, be, it'll be an interesting fight. It'll be a very interesting yeah. fight. Looking we'll see, man. Yeah, he's definitely got to break some of those bad habits, man. You, well, you know, yeah, as far as Broner goes. Stay away from He's eating chitlins. Is that what you guys call it over here, Joker? Chitlins. He's eating <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, food. I see him with a pitch in Floyd, and like, Floyd fights at 154, uh, and Broner... He dwarf much bigger. I mean, this guy must have been 165 pounds in that picture, 165, 170 pounds. So he's obviously. I mean, when you look at his dad, he's obviously got the genes to be a big guy. So he's he's <laughs> he's going to have weight issues, and he has to keep on top of it. Otherwise, like Beat said, he's going to have that beer belly, and he's going to be sluggish, and he's going to get taken out again. Well, this time he he's got the four. This time he's going straight back into camp, so he won't. No. Be allowed to develop bigger, so that will be. Yeah. That should be on his side. That should be on his side. But like I said, him staying out in the limelight is is great. I mean, obviously you can't go around giving it the big one when you've just got your ass whooped. I mean, no one's going to take you serious. So he's keeping out the limelight, and um, hopefully, he's he's concentrating on Madonna and Madonna only. And if that's the case, I think he'll do Madonna because let's be real, Madonna is is overrated. I mean, all of a sudden he's this. He's, he's Roberto Duran, Mark II, isn't he? 
I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, no, he, he's improved a lot, man. Like, you've got to give him a ton of credit for that win, man. I he, like, he, he fought a really good fight. Yeah, he, he did. He fought a really good fight. You've got to give him his credit. He didn't do anything special, Beats. I mean, Boner was Boner was awful. Let's be real. I mean, his feet was. He, he was flat-footed, he wasn't moving, he was letting Madonna hit him, trying to shoulder roll punches that were hitting him clean on the chin. It was a terrible performance. Madonna has improved, he's, he, obviously the jab, he started to got a lot better jab and he closes the range better. You know, you know his trainer Sanchez has taught him a See, few few things, but he's, he does nothing special, does he, Beats? I mean, he's... No, no, but you, 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 this is the second unbeaten prospect he's knocked off. Like, he done that to Ortiz and Finn. Nobody has beaten Madonna, only Devin, only Devin Alexander. You know, but everybody who goes in there with him, like, I don't ever get knocked out. Look at his, look at his KO percentage, man. That, 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 he's not, yeah, that's yeah, not a chump. Yeah, you know I mean? He's not a chump. This guy can fight. And he's a tough Argentinian, you know. Well, this is where, well, this is where Mark can come in, Beats, because Mark, he actually despises Madonna, I think, and he just doesn't rate the guy mm -hmm. at all. So I'm going to let Mark come in this one with you and debate this. Yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, he didn't knock out Eric Morales, did he? Eric Morales, he was supposed to stop in the first three rounds. He, you know, he, he got embarrassed by by Morales. You know. Well, he beat Morales, though, didn't he? Well, barely. I thought it was a draw. Yeah, but he beat him. But he did beat him, though. He did beat him. At barely. Yeah, you know, he didn't look good enough. Uh, he, 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 he didn't I mean, look good. You see, you see, the thing is, you're talking about guys like Morales, like he, he he's somebody from down the road. That's a ring legend. <laughs> yeah, but, he, but he's like several, oh, he yeah, but only, several only weights above where he's from. Yeah, but only Manny Pacquiao is really way, annihilated. Good. Okay, that guy Raheem outboxed him, but Morales is not easy work. No. He's not. He, he could come. He could. He could fight today, and he's not easy work. I mean, he's not yeah, easy work. Nah, I mean, Danny That's Garcia so got Danny Garcia got a lot of credit for beating Eric Morales. He got a lot of credit for that. So. Um, yeah, I'll... yeah, and he struggled for the first fight. And look at him now, he's one of the best fighters in the game. Yeah, I mean, Madonna's Eric, it, it's... work, he's not easy work. He's... That's a ring legend. Go and look at his fights with Barrera, that, that's a ring legend, man. Yeah, they were great fights. Yeah, but they're, they're not the same, they're not yeah. the same weights, though. It's irrelevant to this conversation, you know. If we what, what's irrelevant. We're talking What's about him when he was in his prime. What when you're talking about when he's his prime is irrelevant yeah, to talking about him he's when he's out of his prime and the fighting in one prime. Well, it's not easy work. He's not easy work. Well, Riddick Bowe is a, a ring legend. Let's put him in with Vladimir Klitschko. No, I, mean, I think what he's trying to say is that. Um... I don't know. You lost me on that mark. You seem, you seem like you seem like you, you you've got um, some gripe somewhere. <laughs> well, you're not really correlating on, 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 on my on my dawn, yeah. But I, I I don't I don't rate that performance again against Morales. He was he was supposed to destroy him. That's that's not lie about it. Even if Who even if let's be real, everybody said he was supposed. Everybody everybody said he was supposed to destroy him. I didn't say that. I didn't say you said that. I said everybody said he was going to destroy him. You I didn't say anyone's what? name specifically. Well, he was supposed to destroy him. That's the point. He was odds on, odds on to destroy him, you know, inside the distance. He, I was listening to the commentary. They were going, no one gives him Morales a chance. And at the end of the day, he fought it to within a point. Yeah, but this, Eric Morales is one of the best fighters to come out of Mexico. He's one of the, he's one of the best. He's one of the best. Yeah, he, he was a, he's definitely he's not, he's not a legend of the sport. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I think people should give Maidana a lot more credit for beating Broner than people are, man. I mean, it's not just about what Broner didn't do right. Maidana came in there, he was focused. The guy was training. He went in the training camp early, and he put up a hell of a fight, man. So I give Maidana tons of credit, you know. And uh, we'll see. I mean, it looks like Maidana isn't very interested in the rematch with Adrian right now. Uh, you know, he's obviously trying to put himself in the Mayweather sweepstakes. So uh, that that fight, I don't even know if it's gonna happen. I know uh, Adrian has that contractual agreement, but Madonna just seems like he really doesn't want it, from what I've read. You know, I don't know if everybody, anybody else has read that, but it just looks like he's looking for it every way out of the fight. Yeah, but that's a bit funny, really, because this is a guy that, that threw all his toys out the pram because Amir Khan would give him a rematch. So you know, that's what makes me laugh about some fighters. You know, they get the win. Um, and, and do a runner, but if it's the other way around, they're, they're crying, at the, they're crying at the door. They're oh. They're
You know, at the end of the day, you've got to be fair. Madonna should give Brona a rematch because if it weren't for Adrian Brona giving him a I, shot, well, here's then what I'm who say. would be who, Brona would be probably fighting Victor Ortiz or someone like that um, next uh, in a second fight with he would have got a big fight with Brona where everyone's now saying he's a warrior. So you know, you got to give. I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, but I don't think he necessarily has to, other than obviously the contract. But aside from that, let's be honest. I mean, he did beat Broner pretty decisively. Uh, and I'd obviously love to see a rematch. I'd love to see if Broner could adapt. And I think Broner can adapt in a rematch. But I don't think it's necessarily, oh, he, he has to. I mean, other than the contract, of course. Because, um, I, I mean, he put it on Broner. Let's be honest. He really did put it on him to where, uh, <laughs> you know, it, there's not really a lot there, you know. I agree. I, apart from the contractual clause, he that like if you're talking about what happened in the ring, he's not really obligated to suit himself to prove himself against Bronner. No, no fighters yeah. obligated to fight anyone, but obviously, I I think Madonna should um, do the right thing and let Bronner have his chance. I think this yeah, is hey, I, I hear think, you, I, man. I, I, I'm, I'm a joke on this one. I think this is the contract. You know what I mean? If there's a rematch stipulated, he's, he's got to make a choice. Either give up the belt or fight the guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but, I agree. Um, he convinced I agree. Wonderful. Hopefully we get to turn, like, It's not like Groves and Frotch, is it? It's not like that. I mean, he, he beat Broner up bad. He, I mean, he was, he was a, I mean, I thought Broner fought well in Spurs, but, you know, he done his thing. It was a good performance. So he, he should be able to go yeah, and exactly. dictate his career to a degree. But the thing is, though, if he doesn't he fight Broner, then he's going to have to go in there with Furman, and that's going to be even worse for him. So there's nowhere really to go for Madonna for me. I'd say that. I'd say that. But I just think Furman's a different level. I think Furman is all wrong for him. This, this kid's a special talent. I think he'll take he'll take yeah. Madonna to Furman, school. Furman is the future of 147, that's for sure. Yeah. I think he's far too much for Madonna. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you guys underestimate Madonna. That's not like I underestimate him, mate. I just believe that Keith Thurman is a special talent. I don't think Madonna is. It. I think he Keith, got Keith, hit by, Listen, listen. Broner never got hit by that kind of power he got hit. Yeah, but he's not been in that division, has he? He's had one fight in that division, beast. Uh, I'm saying Keith Thurman hasn't got hit by 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 Madonna yet. He hasn't got hit by Madonna bomb yet. No, but a multi-Madonna. Yeah, but he, get, he hit, got hit by Soto Karras. And, um, and, and, and if, if I'm right, didn't Karras fight Madonna? Not the same power. Yeah, but didn't, Not the same power. Yeah, but didn't, 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 didn't them two go to have a fight, Madonna and Soto Karras? I thought Soto Karras held his own, if, I, if I'm right. No, Madonna knocked him out. Yeah, but he was he hold, him out. Yeah, he did, but he was holding his own for a while. I mean, that... I think yeah, he got knocked out in yeah, the end. He yeah, yeah, prevailed. He's yeah. not the same power. Well, that's what he hasn't got hit by, by, by Madonna. No. Like, okay, Thurman is favoured to beat Madonna, but what happens if a bomb lands? What happens? Yeah, but I think Keith Thurman. Yeah, and see the thing about the the thing about Thurman that we we still do have to ask a more questions about him because he did get hurt in the episode of Karas fight, and I give him that he he obviously showed that he had a good chin, he held up, but. I mean, Madonna, yeah. I mean, obviously, if that fight happened, I'd be leaning towards Keith Thurman because I think the difference between him and Broner is Thurman has that luxury of being able to box off the back foot a little bit. He kind of showed that. And then, obviously, he has some power of his own to make a guy like Madonna respect him. But there still are some questions at what would happen if he does get caught by Madonna because, I mean, that's what Madonna is. He's a puncher. He could hit, man. And if he does catch Thurman... Oh, yeah, and are, are we forgetting, is, are we forgetting it? Are we forgetting Keith Thurman's a puncher, a very big puncher that punches from angles, and you don't see it coming from no, no, a southpaw stance. Is. I mean, he's going to pick Madonna apart. Madonna was lunging in on Broner, but Broner no, was just too. Point. Go on, go on, Joker. Let me make this point though. Here's the thing though. How do we know that if Broner didn't get hurt as early as he did in the Madonna fight, that that fight would have went that way? Maybe if Broner goes a little bit longer without getting hurt, uh, Broner could have won a couple of rounds. I, I mean, I think the problem is because he got hurt with those heavy shots and he went down, he was on the spaghetti legs, that dictated the rest of the fight. But with that being said, if a guy like Madonna somehow hurts Thurman early on in that fight, and Thurman does have some defensive issues, let's be honest. Yes, he if does. he gets hurt early, early on in the fight, that changes the whole dynamic. So with these power guys, sometimes it could be whoever lands first. Well, this you know is it, I mean? and this is why Thurman has his issues because Thurman actually goes to to finish fights. 
he you know he he puts all his power all his body weight into punches and from he, he throws terrific punches so at the end of the day when you're going out to f uh, finish someone you're going to leave yourself open and that's the problem with Thurman but that's going to come with experience this guy's dangerous I mean I, I think if Madonna walks into two or three off um, Thurman then he's not getting up I mean because the power between him and Adrian Broner is a light years away. Yeah, that, that's if Thurman, loads, if Thurman loads up against Maidana, he could find himself on the floor and not get him back to touch Yeah, he could, he could. That's what Victor Ortiz does. If he, look, if he boxes carefully, then yeah, he should win. But if he decides to load up as he wants to take, he could find himself on the floor. Uh, and this is why he has to come with the right game plan, that, um, which Adrian Broner didn't. Adrian Broner thought he could walk Madonna down. It was ridiculous to watch. I mean... It's a da dangerous fight. Madonna's a dangerous fight for anyone. Let's be real. He, he is. He could beat anyone on that day. But I just feel a good boxer like Thurman, I just think he's going to be too much for Madonna. I think, Carl, I, that, I uh, think... Thurman, Sorry, mate, go on. Thurman's supposed to be fighting um, uh, Porter next. Well, this is... In April. Well, this is... There's a, a rumour coming out that Porter and Thurman are going to fight and Cal Brooks going to fight the winner of them two. I mean... <laughs> What, what that'd be cracking that will I mean I, I'm really looking forward to that if that's if that's true whether it is or not no I don't see Kel Brook winning any of them first I mean I know you're not a big Kel Brook fan but I see talent in him beats, uh, beats I really do I see some in there this guy he's just getting better for me he's getting a bigger he's punching power he's growing into his punching power I mean look, what, he knocks Senchenko Sparko I mean, Senchenko has got a good chin. If this guy lands, I mean, him, oh, we, sp we spoke, me and Errol, we spoke to Carson Jones yesterday on Scott, and he was saying how surprised he was in the second fight how much Cal Brooks' power would come on. Do you know what I mean? He goes, he, he really powerful shots he was getting hit by. And, you know, that, that's the difference, I think. Yeah, I think, he should have done that the first fight, really. He shouldn't really be looking at Carson Jones' record. Shouldn't he? He reminds me of Victor Ortiz with a heart. That's who Keith Thurman reminds me of. I don't know why. Maybe it's just me. Does anyone else get that feeling? Do you kind of remind you of Victor Ortiz at all? I mean, yeah. I'd Cal Brooks a better fighter than Victor Ortiz, in my opinion. I mean, listen, we talk, Victor Ortiz, we're talking a man that's just... Based on what? Based on what, though? Based, based on, on what? Obviously, resumes, I can't say that because obviously Ortiz has fought some good fighters, but we're talking about a man that's, that lost to Jose Zito Lopez. I mean, come on now. I mean... This guy's quick yeah, in every opportunity I, I, I he's had. A bit I mean, in the UK. Sorry? Put, yeah, yeah, Brook, yeah, yeah I, I agree. I agree. Brooks been brought on slow, and I, I, you know, but the Devin Alexander fight, I, I don't believe he ducked that fight. I just think it was injuries. I mean, you, you know, you can't help injuries in boxing. Uh, I think it was just unlucky. Three fights. Yeah, canceled. but Stewart, Stewart, let me ask you a question though. I mean, aside from the Devin Alexander fight, I'm not going to fully blame him for that fight, but. Let's be honest, at, at this stage in, in, say, a Keith Thurman's career or in a Broner's career or somebody like that, if they were fighting a guy like, uh, what's the guy you just brought up, Sinchenko, I mean, what would you say, man? I mean, you'd be you'd be livid about that. So, I mean, I think you're kind of giving Kell Brook a, a special pass. I mean, yeah, but look, the guy does need to really speed it up, man. Yeah, but I'm giving, I agree. He does need to speed it up. But this is the year, of, this is the year for Kell Brook. I mean, obviously... He's been a pro for nine years, you know? Yeah, and obviously Frank Warren... I heard Frank Warren got rid of him. That's what I heard because he, didn't, Frank Warren didn't rate him. He obviously didn't take fighting uh, serious at the start. I mean, I've heard he was a bit of a drinker. Kelbrook's he, a poser. Yeah, I heard, is a poser. Yeah, yeah, I've heard he likes. To, I've heard he likes to go to the pose. clubs and pose and drink and that lot. I, I've heard all that. But I think since that Carson Jones wake up, I think he's starting to take boxing a bit serious. He's got a nutritionist now, and I think he's grown into his power. I mean, he's a good boxer. I mean, come on. How can you say Kel Brook hasn't got talent? No one could say that. He's got skills. I'm not saying he hasn't yeah. got skills. I'm not saying he ain't got skills. But I don't think I don't think he's a good fighter. Yeah, you need to be... You need to yeah, have I mean, a lot of people think that. There's a lot of people. The stick I get beats for saying about Kel Brook being a good fighter. I mean, no one. I've got no one on my side. It's like I'm on my own against the world. I mean, no one seems to rate him. But, um, well, you should be, you should be, because you were supporting Tolu Bellew, and when they lose, you jump off board as well. And talking about Carson Jones, yeah, tell the truth, he took the fight with like two weeks' notice, and and Kelbrook came in heavy in that fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelbrook came in like yeah, but I was just saying the contract. Yeah, that's what. But oh. I was just saying about how Carson was saying how the difference in the punching power from from the first fight to the second fight, which he did say. So, I, and I, I believe that's true. So, I mean, I, I do believe that Kelbrook is getting stronger with his punches.
Because before when he first well, let me ask was controversial. Um, no, I think yeah. Carson Jones admitted he got his ass whooped to me and Errol, so I don't Yeah, yeah, but he, he... He said, "Yeah, but he, he also said he had. He also said he had very personal question, uh, personal problems, and you know, me, me and Stuart, we talked to him about some of his yeah. problems with his girlfriend. I actually, we actually, I actually asked. Well, Errol asked him. Errol asked him, not me. Asked <laughs> <laughs> the question: did, did, um, did something happen with his girlfriend? Isn't it? And like, you know, he said, nah, if he, if, he was, if his girlfriend was gonna cheat on him, he wouldn't cheat with with none of you English bums, in it." And me and no, Stuart, he, he, no, he didn't say that. He said, um, if my missus was going to cheat on me, it wouldn't be with, a, with a, one of you ugly motherfuckers over there. That's what he said. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah like, no, oh, look. See, that's the kind of attitude that will get your girl back from every orifice and angle, you know? Yeah, well, I've heard, <laughs> I've, I've heard the Welsh boys give her a good scene too, but whether it's true or not. <laughs> he, he, said, he said it didn't happen anyway, but Kel, yeah. Kel's not serious, man. Kel's, Kel's not on it, man. He's not, he's not calling out no one's name. He ain't calling out no Furman. He's not, he's not calling out Sean Porter. You know what I mean? He, he, you know what I mean? He had Devin I, how many it, times? He's not on it. He's, not he's on calling it. out Sean Porter. He don't want it. 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 Eddie Hearn's got him comfortable where he is. He's making decent purses. He's a big fish in the sky sports pot. In the little spot. You know what I mean? He's comfortable. You know? Yeah. And after nine, listen, after after nine years, if you ain't made that move after nine years, it's hard to do it. It's hard to do it. You know? See, that, that see, that's why pa Pascal, he came over to here when Frotch was undefeated and gave him a good fight. Yeah, he did. You know? But Pascal's not been the same since, Beats. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. I mean, that's probably a bad move for him, really. Because he's just not been the same well, fighter. You can say that he beat Chad Dawson. Man. Yeah, I like, know. He, I know, but that was on. It was on a technicality. When it? it weren't like he went in there and destroyed Chad. Yeah, Dawson. he was winning the fight, wasn't he? He was winning the fight. Yeah, I mean, mm. before before Pascal used to come in, he was like a warrior. He used to just put just throw bombs and go to toe to toe. But you then, can't you can't do that against Chad Dawson, though. You can't. No, but he just he started becoming very negative after that fight. It was like fuck me, I don't want to go through that again. And I'm gonna get yeah, on the back. Yeah, because he lost it. against Carl Frotch. The, the loss against Carl Frotch, you know, any undefeated fighter when they lose, they change their strategy. When he, but the thing is, the bottom line, he beat he beat the uh, the, the the number one at the light heavyweight, and he was there until Hopkins freaking messed his head. And Roy Jones is is is, is tampered with him, and he, he's he's dabbling in Roy Jones, which in my eyes he looked pretty good at it, man. I don't think it would work against um Stevenson, but it looked good against 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 a shot Butte. Butte was shot, man. I don't know. I, I don't know. Anyone could give Booty any round. Booty, Booty was terrible. Bro. <laughs> well, Jim Watt give it. Jim, like, Jim Watt had him winning the fight by a round. Jim, I know. Jim, I was. I was Jim Watt had him winning the fight by a round. I mean, I don't know what Jim, Jim Watt. Was, I don't know what. I don't know why they were criticizing so bad. That was a good, good display. Like, and and also, me and you argued about it. Like when when uh when what's his name thing was in the corner and he was standing there. He was just letting Booty think so he can get a rematch, get more money. They don't want to fight. Um, yeah, but that's ridiculous. Thing, you know? That's ridiculous. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. I believe that he just took punches and get a rematch. I believe that. I believe that. He, 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 he believed that. He just was to keep milking, milking Bute and milk, milk Bute's fans, taking their money. Bute is so overhyped, man. That's what. He's overhyped. Yeah, yeah and, and right? he's been for a while. You know what's funny too is he avoided the Carl Frotch rematch, and then look what yeah. happened. I mean, this guy could have went to Nottingham and tried to fight uh, Carl Frotch, but he, he just wanted no part in it. And uh, look what happened to him. Yeah, you but know? do you blame him? I mean, it's like. When, when someone's beat you up, when someone beats your ass that bad, I mean, you've got to be stupid to go back for se for seconds, isn't you? I mean, Darren Darren yeah. ba Darren Barker Darren Barker should have went back, isn't it? Like it's the same thing. Darren ba if Darren Barker's hip was there, he would have went. Back. If his hip was alright, he would have went back. He's got more heart than Booty. Yeah, Darren Barker, I don't I, I don't know. I mean, Booty is a Booty. Yeah, terrible. I mean, I, I was I was not too too pleased with Darren Barker's performance. To be honest with you, against. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I thought it was a bit of a gutless performance. To be honest with you, I think mean, as soon as Darren Barker his hit went, he's thinking, "Fuck me, I might as well get out of him." The, the Italian tiles are bought already. I've got my new widescreen telly. The, the wife's <laughs> shoes are bought. Fuck this, let's get out of this game. I mean, that's how I see it. Think yeah. I you think I, I, I don't need bricked out. I just think he thought, "Fuck this, this is enough for me. I'm, I'm out of here." Because well, uh, Danny, William, Danny Williams fought, fought, fought with a dislocated shoulder. Do you know what I mean? So there's no excuse. He's at least tried. The guy was like, the guy's well enough to wave to the ring and say, no, no, no more. So And the fucking towel, that came in, that was flying in, weren't it? Couldn't well, wait well, to get well, that in. Well, what I wonder is, what I wonder is how hurt was he going into the fight? Like, did he realize 
uh, you know, he had this much injury problems because we obviously know the guy has a huge history of injury problems. So I'm just wondering, did he know this going in, in, into the fight and just thought, oh, you know, the hell with it. I, this is my big payday. I'm not going to risk pulling out of the fight, which if that's the case, uh, you, you know, it's hard to really to, to really hurt uh, discredit him for that because fans are pissed off at David Hay because he wouldn't fight with a cut, you know? So if a guy wants to go into the ring and say, you know what, I'm going to try to put it on the line and see what I can do. I don't know how much we can knock him for that. You know, you got to be a little bit consistent. Yeah. I'm... Yeah, but you, you don't know, man. It was up against him when he took, because he went for the money, Barker. You know I mean, they paid him a lot of money to go to Germany. And when I heard, I, well, I only found out till recently before the fight happened that it was in Germany. I, was like, I, can't, I couldn't believe he was going over there. Yeah, me neither. You know? You know, a lot of money, man. Up for them a couple of mils. Up for them a couple of mils. Yeah, he got one and a half million for it. That's a lot of money for Darren Barker. Yeah, it's the most he's ever, that's the most person he's ever got. And he, and he would have got another He would have got another mil in the rematch as well. Of course. Which he mm, didn't want. Pay for his um, Italian tiles. Yeah, <laughs> we just said that, Mark. It? It, it, that's what he was thinking when, funny, he, it? when his it's ass was on the... Man. When he was on the floor against Derby, he, put, he looked at the corner and thought, fuck it, the Italian tiles are paid for. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> who's that fire who's that, who's that, who's that, who lost... Man, that's what it is. Well, we're harsh. We're harsh on this show. I mean, that's right, man. That's that's a good boxer. Yeah, man. I know. I mean, I know he's your boy from your ends and that lot. So I get it. I do really get it. But I was just, yeah, uh, was a, I was, role, yeah, man. I was, I was not too happy with Darren Park after that performance. I, 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 I agree yeah, with, I agree with Joker. I, I believe he was injured before that fight. Yeah, you let him have yeah. it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah what are you saying, he's EJ? You were saying something. Pictures. He's had a lot of injuries, though, hasn't he? So, but you have to fight injured as a boxer, man, or you're exactly never paid. Beats. Exactly, beats. This is where I'm coming from. Yeah, but he wanted. Yeah, you but he, if you look at, yeah, he didn't want to stop though. The, he's corner through the towel, and he wanted to carry on like Purdy when he Devin, Devin Alexander, like Purdy wanted to continue. But that Purdy and that Bundu thing was a beauty, bro. That Bundu just nicely sealed him off. You know that? There's he got bashed up, bro. You know what I mean, that that's oh, what happened. Man, that guy crushed him. Up. Yeah, that Bundu, I'm... that Bundu guy stuffed him nicely. You know what I mean? That's what happens if you let it go on. So this is what they threw the towel in, and Darren, Darren accepted. it. Because you know Lee they can they get hurt. Yeah, the thing with Lee Purdy, I mean, he's got a great fan base for such an average fighter. I mean, this is why he's still getting on cards. I mean, I I called um, him a bum online, and I was getting death threats. I mean, this guy's got some serious. <laughs> yeah, this guy's got some serious fans, man. They were going to hunt me down and get me, man. So you know. This is why yeah, this is why these fighters are still selling. Because let's be real, Lee Purdy, he, he's he's god awful, isn't he? Hey, remember I mean, Carson Jones still wants it. Remember we were talking we, to Carson. Yeah. Carson. And I'd watch that fight. I'd I'd watch just for some, yeah, just for still, just Carson for it. Yeah, Carson for an established. I've been a starting fight to watch for me man, and the card. They're gonna put, if they're gonna put Lee Purdy back in the ring, they have to match make him very carefully now because he took a good beating in that last fight, man. He did beat. Yeah. <laughs> he got cooked. He can't nice cope. Number. He can't cope with people with boxing ability. That's the problem with him. No, no, no. I saw him in Wembley, man. He's slow. Well, that's because he's, he's domestic level, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, anyone with anyone with a I'm nice job. Would you say he's English? I don't think he's English title level. No. No, he's not, man. He just come from from no no licensed boxing, man. He's he's still there, isn't it? Yeah. But he's a hard mm. man, isn't it? He's a hard man. He can take punches like. Well, yeah, nah, he's, oh, he's on, tough, on, on the boxing he's skills, like, he's doomed. Well, just put it if right. you meet him in the kebab shop after the, I mean, time yeah. out in the pub, then boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I put you to sleep yeah. and I'm in the street. But, you, you know, yeah, this, guy, this guy was laughing at Devin Alexander. Devin Alexander was putting eight punch combinations right on the button. He was, and he was but going, he always does. He was yeah, laughing at But he was going, come on, Devin, is that all you got? Is that all you got, yeah, Devin? The man's crazy, but he's just got no ability. Yeah, but it, it, yeah, that's what I was about to say. I mean, the only problem is, uh, hey, credit to him for having a great chin. But yeah. at the end of the day, these guys who like to just sit there and smile when they get hit, I mean, like freaking Brandon Rios, like, that's wonderful, dude. Congrats. You got a good chin, but so does the punching bag. You got to hit back, bro. I mean, this is boxing. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, and the yeah. thing is, man, it's, it's an accumulation thing as well. Because you, yeah, you yeah, smile yeah. now, but 10 years down the time, when you start aging, then other ailments start kicking in. You know what I mean? Then punches that mm. come back. Yeah, you're smiling. You're smiling. We're gonna smile at you. Yeah. Man. you know have I mean? you heard Brandon? Have you heard Brandon and Rios talk though? Exactly. He's now, man. He's 27 years he's old, Brandon. Brand Brandon Rios is 27 years old, and he speaks like a, a a 50, 60 year old veteran that's been in like 300 fights. And that's not good. Right. 
Pacquiao's eyes. Oh, Pacquiao's gone because it's you, when you look at Pacquiao in the eyes, there's nothing there. I mean, this guy's going to be punch drunk when he's older. You can tell. Well, you should. Well, I mean, uh, so Brandon Rios, James man. Him. Here's a guy who's trying to fight uh, Ruslan Provodnikov next. You know, so that's the next thing. I mean, he's yeah. a guy who. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, everything with him is a war, man. That's all they could do is just put this guy in the toughest fights. And, um, you know, yeah. that's the only way he's, he could sell tickets, you know. So that's the crazy thing about it. You know, I just don't know what's what's going to be the future for this guy. I really don't. The best yeah, thing that's to happened to him off. is that he's had, um, he's, he's had, you know, the time off, that now forced time off because of his drug test. Mm. I mean, uh, what, what, yeah, that's right. Drug, well, drug testing issues. <laughs> Yeah, but this this is the thing. How can a guy going up in weight need dieting supplements to make one four seven? When he's a one forty five. Oh, I'll, this... I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly why. I'll tell you exactly why. Did you see what he was oh, drinking oh. in the first episode of that HBO thing? Big Red Bull. Drinking Red Bull and he's a fighter. I I used to drink Red Bull daily, nightly, and ever so nightly, And I piled on the pounds. I've stopped drinking it now, and I just fell off. Fell off. Like that. He, he's got bad. I reckon that's what, what James Tony's problem was. I reckon, um, I think Steve Collins said, when he used to spar with James Tony, this is a prime James Tony, the guy was drinking Pepsi in the corner the, uh, during the interviews and sparring. He'd like do three round sparring he's, and then drink Pepsi. He is. He's greedy, well, isn't he? He's got a lot of money as well. Mm hmm. You know, really? And it's just a discipline thing, man. I mean, like I said, you look at the guys like the Floyd Mayweathers. Everybody wants to be Mayweather, but nobody wants to apply themselves to the sport like Mayweather does. Nobody wants to put in the dedication of a of an Andre Ward or you know like like a Vladimir Klitschko the way these guys train. I mean, nobody wants to do it, but everybody wants their status in the sport. You know, so yeah. that's just what it is, man. Some of these boxers need to understand that you know if you're gonna get in this ring, man, you're putting your life on the line. You better treat your yeah. body right, so, you know? Can I just say something about Floyd? And this is what people don't realise. I mean, Floyd Mayweather goes to some of the best clubs in Las Vegas. He's got girls... Strip clubs, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, got girls throwing themselves at him. He's got champagne yeah. spraying everywhere. And he will leave. Yeah. He will leave 2 o'clock in the morning to go and do, to gym. He's not even in a fight. This is the sort of dedication this guy brings to the sport. And that's why he's at the top. And that's why he's at that level. This guy will... He will leave a nightclub at 2 o'clock in the morning when it's booming and the best DJ in town's playing. And he'll go to the gym and do his work, and there's not a lot of fighters that could do it. You try getting Kel Brook yeah. out of that club. Yeah, but his dad beat him into it. That's what his dad beat him into, and that's all he knows, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? Floyd, Floyd's very... Floyd's disciplined, and um, and that, that's the way that is. But the other fighters, like Broner and the rest of them, they're following Floyd, but they haven't got no discipline. And and, no, and the thing is, yeah, Floyd... Regardless of Floyd argues with his, with, um, his dad, he listens to his uncle and respects his uncle, so... You know what I mean? He he makes sure he goes training, but Bronan got no respect for his corner, no respect for the adult authorities in 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 his life, you know. And you need them sort of thing people in your life to to keep you um reel you in, and when you're getting out of hand. So you know what I mean? That's how these things are. Um, why Bronan's going off? I, I, and I I think he's gonna lose in the rematch. I think he'll lose. He can get knocked out in the rematch. But I need to leave it alone. You think you get knocked out? Yeah? I'm nah, I'll probably not knocked out. But I I don't think he win though. I don't think he win. I don't think. He, I'm glad he's going back in there because he's killed a lot of. He's not going to win that fight. The guy's too big, man. Like, man, big. it's a big ox. It's a big ox, man. Like, like hey, you say, hey, the man. discipline, the discipline, it will hurt you, man. It will hurt you. The first punch knocked the confidence out of you. You know what I mean? Like, and then from then on, it's a yeah, big Yeah, Arrow, you sound a little bit like, far like, away, man. Can you move can you move close to your mic? Okay, like, the first punch, yeah, Madonna hey. lands on him. So it's not, not the confidence out of him. You can hear me, right? Yeah, fine. Yeah, you're good now. Yeah, uh, yeah. The first part is going to knock the confidence out of him, and then he's going to be running like, running around the ring again, and it's going to be funny. It's going to be a freaking... Like, that last fight was hilarious, man. He's there bloody humping on humping on Madonna, and Madonna humping on him. It's hilarious, mate. It's like a comedy show. <laughs> it's a comedy... That, that was like Lauren and Hardy, or, you know what I mean? It was hilarious, man. That was yeah, the most man. funniest fight if you've ever seen in a boxing yeah. ring on a professional ring. It's hilarious. Yeah, and the, yeah, like, and the joke was wait. on Broner, though. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, he got, he, yeah. So now he's not even taking serious now. He's taken as a clown. Like, people put him in the, in the pantheon as, as a as a Berto. And Berto. It's like they put these people... <laughs> they're making him look like he's a player as a joke. But that's, you know, it's like he was took him seriously now. But now he looks like a sideshow. People are only seeing it for the spectacle now. Not necessarily to take him seriously as a serious compared to because of, of you know his lifestyle banging two girl banging them two lesbians and <laughs> shitting money in the toilet <laughs>
<laughs> That's what upset me. That's what I was more upset when he was flushing that money down the toilet. I mean, why? Why? Oh, that, that's because just... I think if you come from a poor area where you got you, yeah. you, you when people your own people are struggling, and put yeah. that into boxing for the kids or something. Don't don't be a fucking wank and show off. I mean, you don't see Bill Gates is a billionaire. You don't see him doing it. And he, he could fucking buy a Broner's life if he wanted to. So how old is he? How old is he though? Yeah, I know he's young, but he's got, you know. He's, yeah, but he's old enough to. He's old enough to not put out at that age. I had a bloody seven-year-old daughter. Right, so, so, where was he rich before? When was it? When well, he ever, when, when's it? When's it? When's he ever have had that much money in his life? So, uh, you know what I mean? How how can we say that when we've never been rich before? And all of a sudden, we've got money. How would we act? I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, I don't care how yeah. people see me. That's what it is. That's yeah, but what you flush it down the toilet though would you flush your money down the <laughs> yeah. toilet though if I or you just go buy some trainers or something if i done it i wouldn't feel like i'm sweating that now i would do it huh i mean i'll probably go get some new trainers here's what i'm gonna say though i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest on this obviously from a character perspective i 100 disagree with what he did i think it was obviously stupid you know i i mean the guy's not an ambassador for the sport it wasn't a good move but what I will say is by him flushing down that money down the toilet and all the antics he's done, that's what's made him more money now. Like that money has come back to him because that's why people are watching him because yeah, but, of all the antics. So that's yeah, what but the my problem is. My problem is not that he lost that money. My problem is he just threw it away and giving it to his own. There's children in, in, in his. Uh, yeah, but put it into put it into a gym, put it into put it into boxing for the youth, put it into something back to your community, man. No, but toilet, just toilet, push it down the toilet, toilet when there's there's children not even fucking eating. I just don't like things like that. This guy could. No, but I, you I, know what, Stuart? Let me let me what? rebuttal that. I agree with you 100. percent But what I don't like is fans want to see villains. They 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 tune in and they pay to to see these guys be the villains. That's what they want to see. They don't want to see Andre Wards. They don't want to see uh, Vladimir's or anybody who's classy who doesn't talk. They don't yeah, want to see that. They want to see somebody who's running their mouth. And this is what yeah. they want to see. So you know what? The guy's playing the villain role. I disagree with it. It's not classy. But if fans are going to buy into it, if that's what fans are going to glorify, if that's what we're going to do as fans, then it, that's what it, these boxers are going to do. There are no ambassadors, but, but boxing is, is a filthy... It's always been a filthy, dirty, horrible sport. There are no ambassadors. You know, you, there's something we say because it's politically correct to say so. Have to have villains. Have to have villains. Yeah, there's. The, you don't. Think, you, you don't. Andre Woods an ambassador, or Carl Rogers an ambassador, like the way they conduct, or David Hayes an ambassador. Well, no, maybe David, not David Hayes. Right David Hayes an ambassador David. for nobody. <laughs> that guy should just go away. Okay. They represent Sorry. the. They Is represent the country as well. Yeah, like well, no, not Dunn. when he was fighting. Not when he was fighting. Exactly. Not when he was exactly. fighting. Joe Lewis was though. Well, I mean, Muhammad Ali, I don't know. That one's a little debatable. Because Muhammad Ali president. did do a lot for civil rights. So no, you can't really say that. No, no, no. One at a time, guys. Like come, come on, guys. One at a time, please. Judge the draft, he was hated. He was hated. Yeah. He was getting Yeah, he did. He did initially. Yeah, you're right. right? He wasn't no ambassador. Look, thing, things can change. Like, the, the landscape. Matt, Nelson Mandela used to be labeled as a terrorist, right? Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I think Ali's name built up after he beat Foreman. I think that's when he became a hero to a lot of people. Before, but you're right, Pete. The guy was hated. I mean, um, this guy used to say things that no one else could get away with, especially a black guy in the '60s. I mean, it's good. the only fact that he was the heavyweight champion in the world, he was Muhammad Ali. Is why he got away with what what he did. I mean, he, he was hated, but I think. After the Foreman fight, they realised what what a warrior and what a great man this was, and I think people start to take to him. And when when you talk back, it's like the Lennox Lewis thing I said earlier. We only appreciate these warriors when they've gone. Oh, I agree with that. Well, there, there is, hey, there is, there is an ambassador, mate. Well, he was, man. You know what I mean? He was. He, you know I mean? he wears the, he <laughs> nah, wears the flag. Hey, according, according, to, according to the British Border Control, they didn't think so. He man. glassed they, me. They weren't too he, fond hey, of that. He glassed me. Hey, listen. Yeah, they done him up. But he's well mannered now, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's yeah, all, he is. He's, he's, yeah, he's all cleared off and that. But that, what I'm saying is that when they go and fight other fighters abroad, they're the ambassador of the. That's why, like, they 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 get scrutinized a lot. But they're the ambassador for our country going out there to fight to fight whoever from from whoever, whoever country. I mean, if but, I was um, to send someone out to represent our country, it wouldn't be Derek Chisora. I mean, 
This guy's an ambassador. <laughs> for, this guy's well, an look, ambassador for me. He's not ambassador material, is he? Let's be real. I mean, who is he, he's a loose cannon. If we say representing the country, are you talking about? As an ambassador, that's what Errol's saying. Yeah, like to say. No, 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 not an ambassador. I'm talking about. Look, when they go to fight other people in their country, they're representing people from the country. That's the way it is. It's wearing the English flag, the British flag, or whatever. Right? You represent the country. That's the way it is, man. Yeah, and last time like... he last time he represented, he got banned from Germany. Yeah, oh, but yeah, this what I'm saying is it, it looked bad on England. That's why it was a big whole hoorah about it, and that's why they done him up for a year. But he, since then, he's cleaned up his act. Frank's got him all sorted out, and yeah. he's behaving himself. And now, he's a better fighter for it. He is a better fighter. Well, I don't know about he's a better fighter, look, but he's, look, he's look. doing his. You can pretty it up as much as you like. I don't, I, look, you could. Who's the biggest ambassador who doesn't actually box in the ring now for boxing? Mike Tyson. Right. Yeah. Mike Tyson is one of the big like Mike Tyson still draws people to the sport. He hasn't boxed for years. He's a convicted rapist. Used to mug people in Brownsville. Tried to break Bofa's arm. <laughs> bit off Oliver Hill's ear. Nearly yeah. knocked a nearly knocked a referee out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and, and he's loved. That's a great point. That's what I was saying too, Beats. That's what I was saying. We glorify villains, man. I agree with you. But Mike Tyson was the last superstar in boxing for my my I mean when you say Floyd, Floyd Mayweather weren't Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson in his day, in his prime, was more famous than the president. Floyd Mayweather's not on that level. Yeah, no, Floyd, never Floyd will be. Tyson was. Floyd, never no will way. be. And Tyson was the last big star we had. I mean, even my my, my mate's boxing, and she always just say, "Oh, that Tyson, he's an animal." I mean, my mum even knew about him. That's how that's how famous this guy was. Do you know what I mean? And look, we, we we just ain't got that anymore in boxing. The fit look. look yeah, we have, we have, wait, the we fear have, factor man, in boxing. Mm. Sorry, you're no, no, I'll say we. Have, Go on, I say, I say uh, we have, man. We have Deontay Wilder's coming through and some of the others, some uh, of the other heavyweights yeah, coming you through. You can't put Deontay you know Wilder in mean? Tyson's bracket, though, can you? No, nah, no, nah, I'm talking look, about man, knockouts, man. Yeah. You, you look, look, look. It's the, you see that fear factor. I was watching Tyson do that one man show, and there's women in the audience. And when he was telling some of his stories, you could see they were his front. <laughs> you see them yeah. getting scared, but it, yeah, it's like right. at the same time, right? Well, I, I agree with you on that. And you know what? Something that EJ... I'm sorry, Beats. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah. No, you got it. Bro. Yeah, I was saying... Okay, yeah. I was saying something that EJ brought up, too, before, is that boxing a lot of times go as the heavy, goes as the heavyweight division goes. And I think that yes. we do need another big heavyweight who's going to be a superstar, who's going to have that bravado, who's going to be knocking people out to do it. Because, hey, credit to Floyd Mayweather and guys like Pacquiao who, who brought in a lot of attention to the sport... Uh, you know, in the welterweight division, but regardless, yeah, people don't want to see smaller men beating each other up. They want to no see the big guys division, doing no it. No heavyweight, yeah, I agree, no division. Yeah. No, no heavyweight division, no boxing. If you That's don't, it. if you That's don't right. get a dominant heavyweight, you, it will never be as big as as it should be. Never. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, exactly. You have to have the. You have to have the, it's the heavyweights who run the, the bloody boxing. They have. To, they're the ones who, who uh, when the clitch goes, hold hostage all the belts. Yeah, he done us in. Now look. One of them's loosen up. Now the other one to loosen it up. And if you look at the history of heavyweight champions, right? Vitaly yeah. Klitschko, he got sprayed in that thing. I don't know if you guys saw it with the That's virus it. thing. He got sprayed yeah, up. He's really in the war there, in the revolution there, right? Like, mm. you go back to Ali, civil rights, Vietnam. Joe Lewis, they used him and Matt Schmeling as pawns in World War II. Major pawns, yeah. right? Yeah, they did. Jack they did. Hey. Like, heavyweight <laughs> boxing is more than a sport. It's more than a sport. It's it's the it's the it's the best um it's the most prestige title of any sport in the world. Any and this sport. is There's and no... this is why this is why boxing is fading because we need a heavyweight champion that's gonna um you know just Maybe. be and uh, be an ambassador. Klitschko's not the man. Klitschko's a great no. fight, but the, the man's got no Tyson person. Fury and and Price yeah, Tyson Fury and David Price yeah, went before they if they met whatever, and some of the other heavyweights are coming through Lucas Brown Australia. Look, man, if they all meet, yeah, I'd already be bothering Tyson Fury to bloody fight Lucas Brown here yeah, to get that Australia, get the ashes started. And then all type, yeah. and then Deontay Wilder needs to fight fucking Derek Jazura. And that, that needs to happen. And the, the, the Klitschko can get, they can get stuffed, yeah? There's some fucking serious fights that I guarantee if they had like a tournament with them four in there, the fucking arenas would be fucking packed, mate. Well, I that's a great that idea, El. That's what, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. It would be. It would that's be. what they've got. I have a, I have a question, though. Oh, go ahead, Stuart. No, go on, Joker. Crack on, mate. All right, cool. I have a question for you guys. Here's my question, though, because 
Is there a heavyweight out here right now? Is there a heavyweight that's going to lock down the division and hold that belt for a good while? Do, other than Vladimir, is there somebody that's going to do that? Because we bring up Mike Tyson. We, we talk about Lennox Lewis. Uh, you know, these these the last great heavyweights. Do we have one around right now that's going to really hold on to that belt? Is Deontay going to do that? Is Tyson Fury going to do that? I, I mean, what do you guys think? Because I'm just not I sold give, on... Give them, give them the opportunity. Give them the opportunity. Yeah, and that Klitschko needs to stop like, fighting them drones, yeah? Give them the opportunity and let's see what's going on. He won't give them the opportunity. And then if he does, look what he does to man. Wrestle over guys' back, man. Me and E-Box was watching that. It was hilarious. Every other minute, he was just rolling on the man's back, man. It was, it was, it was heroin. Yeah, it was yeah. funny, man. What do you think? Yeah. Mark, Mark, what do you think? Honestly, Busted. I don't think so. I think the moment that Klitschko goes, the, those belts are going to get banned like the peace pipe. Yeah, you I agree. Know, one, one guy will win it, <laughs> then he'll get knocked out. The next guy will win it, then he'll get knocked out. And then, yeah, yeah. You know, they'll just pass it around to whoever's going until eventually someone will turn up. I just don't know who's going to be, though. I don't know who's going to be. It, don't, it won't be Fury. You know, I, 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 um, see, I think Anthony Joshua is perfect get, for it. I think he's the man to fill that. We don't know nothing about him. Okay, so. I, I know, but I met him. I met him, me. I, I, he, he ain't got no. He's, con, he's confidence, man. He's still, he's still building up his confidence. Yeah, man. but you it's can't like, judge a fighter by me talking to him. Nah, nah, Len, nah, nah. Lennox Lewis is one of the nicest men you'll ever meet in your life, and the man's. He's very confident, bro. He, Ellis Lewis is very, and he's one. He, Ellis Lewis is very confident guy. Like that. Joshua Joshua's not. Yeah, he was very confident. Like, they took about him and Huey. He don't even want Huey. He don't. He don't want Huey, now. Like. He doesn't even want Huey, right? Like. He's not. He's not on it, like. He just wants to, like, you know, just get a couple of wins and try and build his confidence, like. He's a very uptight. No, really uptight. Shouldn't say that. He's a very, like, you know what I mean? He just. He's not on it, bro. He's. He's not the guy. But I know what you mean. He's got all the attributes. But I don't think he's the guy. Man. But even aside you know from I mean? that, though, here's what I'll say about him. As far as he goes, though, let's be honest. He doesn't have to jump in the ring right now, this second with a Tyson Fury or or a Deontay Wilder, even though it does look like they're trying to fast track him with, I don't agree, I don't agree with that. But if they Bruno. take their time with him, you think yeah. so? <laughs> what? So let's, do, let's just let's have a quick, let's, let me give you a question, all of you. Right, so if the Klitschko's retire tomorrow, which hopefully they will, because yeah. um, obviously they're killing that division, <laughs> um, they had a tournament, like Errol said, great idea, tournament of four. Um, who's yeah. your four going to be? I mean, we'll start with you, Mark. We'll start your way. Go on. Well the, well, the first one's got to be Stuyven because he's the only one who actually deserves to be there, you know, because he's mandatory and hasn't done anything. And well, you know, he's not got his shot for over a year. <laughs> I don't know if Fiori should be in there, but he should be in there more than David Hay. I, I don't even think Wilder should be in there. I think he should fight someone else first. Oh, he should fight a, a tough, you know, mandatory. But you know, if I had to pick them, yeah, I'll pick. I'd pick a few up, but I'd have Stuyven. Fury, Hay, Wilder. Let's go with them. That'll be interesting. Pool, yeah, go on, boxing beats and rhymes. Oh, doesn't matter. Four. F if oh, there's a tournament, okay. four heavyweights. Who, who's your pick for the for the for the tournament when the Klitsch goes go? Well, to be honest, I, I don't think you can really. You, you can probably make take one out of the list that European just said there, but probably about the same thing. There's no spectacular contenders out there. See, I mean, oh, where's yeah. Brian Jennings? I don't know what's happened to him. Oh, um, he looked all right. Yeah, Stavern, um, Fury, Hay. You have to put Hay in there because you need the marketability. I know he pisses everyone off, you know? Yeah, see, I'll I, 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 I go, have to go with my, my four would be Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, um, Pulev, and Stavern. Mm. That would be my four. Mm. Joker Boxing, what about you? Okay. Right, so I was on mute. Yeah, that was that was a good four that you that you just named, Stuart. Um, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I think like Beat said, it, you could put. It really doesn't matter. I mean, you could put Tyson Fury in. You could take him out. You could put Deontay in. You could take him out. At the end of the day, there's not a clear, uh, you know, automatic foregone conclusion of heavyweights right now. So uh, the point is that we need a tournament. That's the point. They need to fight each other, uh, so we could see. And um, you know, the guy to me that looks like the guy to watch is. Uh, out of the bunch, I'd have to say probably Deontay Wilder right now. He's the guy to watch to me. Yeah. Um, well, out, of, out of the yeah. whole lot. Let's ask um, a former heavyweight boxer himself, former heavyweight amateur champion from Finland, Umar Kamalainen. You give us your four. After the Klitschko's are gone. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Manuel Shar comes to my mind because uh, he's 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 been pretty um, pretty good. Only lost once, and that was against Vitali Klitschko. You know. Um, Oldan Oldanier Soli is probably I've, I've seen him. He, he's he, he's took kind of grip on himself. Uh, Olympic gold medalist. He's only lost once. That was against Vitali Klitschko. Then uh, probably Stevern because he's right now really number one at the moment in in WBC. Then the fourth one, you know, I don't know who it would be. You know, um, uh, I guess it would be Tyson Fury or David Hay. Depends on if David Hay is going to be in the mix still. You know. I mean, we're getting a lot of shit. We're getting a lot of shit in the chat for picking Wilder, but I think where the guys are going from, we want to see Wilder fight the top fighters and see how he could. Because you never know if Wilder hits you on the chin, no matter how bad he looks, you're going to sleep. You know, there's there's no there's no other doubt about that. You you're going to sleep if that man hits you on the chin. So that's why I want to see him in there. I want to see him fight Fury. So I know we're getting a lot of shit, but that, that's my opinion on that one. But yeah, I think Errol's your last. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've got like Deontay Wilder. I've got Tyson Fury. I've got, I've got, I've got Lucas, Lucas, Lucas Brown. I like him, man. I like that guy. He, he could throw us a good fight. He'll give a good fight. And um, I think um, I put probably um, yes, yeah, the Vern or Paul Lift, man. One of them guys. Probably, probably just the Vern in it. I'll do yeah. so. I'll put the Vern in there, man. But you, hey, don't forget Thompson. You know, Thompson's all right. There's a wily guy in there. You know, there's some all right, decent heavy hitters in in that division. You know, like. The division right now, yeah, it's probably the best it's been because we're actually talking about it. <laughs> we're actually talking about it because the clips goes one of the clips news is left. So maybe we might get a couple of fights in there. Some of them guys grab a belt so they can unify some of the belts. We might get some decent fights and bring the world back to bring the world back up to boxing again, man. But the division goes where the heavyweight goes, man. All these other little divisions, the little mini mini with these little mini weights, they they're doing all right in that, but they're not carrying the flag, man. Yeah, you know I, I mean? agree. Like, Frank, Beats mentioned Frank Bruno like the, <laughs> about thinking you look like Frank Bruno. Now. He's better than Frank Bruno, but I know what he means mechanic, mechanical. But he's more fluid though. He last if, fight he had a couple of check hooks and you know what I mean. So he looks a bit more. I think yeah, he, he, a bit more. He looks I don't more even think he's stout. I mean, I mean just, they, they just don't seem like you know, like they look physically like they could just pull off both your arms and your neck. Yeah. But when they fight, you know what I mean? it's like damn. You know what I mean? Yeah. They I don't mean, fight well. like how the physiques look, man. Yeah, I'm just, I mean, same with Bruno. I mean, Bruno used to have a tremendous physique. I mean, I still believe that, yeah, that, that, that guy must have been on some. I mean, I really believe he was doing steroids. Bru- nah, yeah. Bruno, 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 that's, Bruno, that's, Bruno, that's, that's, that's Bruno my hits opinion. Harder than Fink, man. Yeah, I mean, Bruno, reckon... no, that's right. Bruno, hit, Bruno hits harder than, than Andy Joshua. Oh, Andy well, Joshua, well, like... yeah, well, they did a thing. They did this thing where he apparently his jab was like being hit by a motorbike at 60 mile an yeah. hour or something like that. That's oh, how hard. Bruno... That's how... And he rocked Tyson. But the problem with Bruno was, I mean, when he got hit on the chin, I mean, he he, he went like the Tin Man when it rained. You know, when he just <laughs> he never he never when really he just got fucking though. just solid yeah, throws up. You know, <laughs> yeah, but he never got rain rain for Dorothy to get the oil can out. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah, but he never got decked like Lennox Lewis. <laughs> Lennox Lewis got Lennox Lewis got took out though. Lennox Lewis, a lot of them guys no, got took out. Bro. Smith knocked him out, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that, all right, but yeah, that, all right, you're right. But Lennox Lewis, yeah, Lennis so so did Tim Witherspoon. I mean, he put around. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah and um, Tyson, I'm Tyson. When I saw the bone, the bone crusher Smith yeah, fight, boy, he was winning all. He was winning that yeah. fight clear, and then my man just landed one shot, boy. The next thing, Bruno was out, man, out. I mean, and, 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 and yeah. bone crusher Smith. He, I mean, he was probably in probably the worst fight, the second worst fight I've ever seen behind Lewis Arkin one day, and that was Mike Tyson v Bone Crusher Smith. It was an awful fight, and and Bone Crusher Smith never been a fan of his, but he put a whooping on Bruno. <laughs> let me hey, let me comment yeah, on something right. really quick. Going back to uh, the Deontay Wilder comment, I know a lot of people are, are kind of down on Wilder because of his resume, but my thing is, man, a lot of these heavyweights, nobody really has a tremendous resume at, in the heavyweight division other than the Klitschko's. That's it. Who else showed me? I mean, people, even Tyson Fury to me, and I, and I know he obviously wanted the David Hay fight, which would have been a very credible win for him if he got it. But I mean, other than that, I mean, Kevin Johnson, are we putting stock in that? Are we putting a whole stock in Steve no, Cunningham? No, no, still no, be- no, still better than, yeah, and, and that's still a little bit better than Deontay. Don't get me wrong, it's still better than Deontay, but not by leaps and bounds yeah, as the perception is out there. It's Deontay just, has to be in there. Better. Deontay has to be in there for the American, for the American viewers. 
They're not going to tune into. Got, they're not going to. Go on, Bates. No, you got your people in the chat room angry, at Wilder. But who's he supposed to fight? He said he's told the world, I want. I, I need Chris Ariola next. Ariola didn't want it. Like he's called out Fury. He said, yeah, "Send the contract." B I T C H, and nothing's come back. Nothing's come back. So in a way, you, you, people can shout down his resume. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, he's, he's, I mean, his, his opponents have been dreadful. I mean, we can't lie about it. But um, the thing oh, is, he, oh, he oh, needs oh. to be in the tournament. He needs to be, because for America, and like I said, he's this big, his big physique, this guy, he looks the part, he talks well, he talks how we want a heavyweight champion to talk, you know, big, he's a big hard man, he knocks people out, but we want to see him fight someone. So he has to be there. And then we'll see what Deontay Wilder's all about. None of them have fought anything. No, but none of them have fought anyone. None of them, apart from the clips, yeah, have fought anyone. None of them. So you know, where we dumping on, on Wilder, but none of them have fought anyone. And if they did, they get flattened. Price is the only one probably stepped up a bit. Price stepped up yeah, big time against Thompson and got flattened, yeah? But at least he stepped up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tyson Fury don't want no exactly. part of Thompson. Yeah. He, 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 let me think with Ty so Tyson. Thompson was calling them out. In his in England, saying, "I'm oh, well, where Thompson is he? Where is he? I want to be." Yeah, he, 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 he didn't say enough. And Lucas Brown, yeah, on Twitter, yeah, I got Lucas. Me and Lucas, yeah, from from down on the Europeans link, yeah, I got it from e, e boxing. Mm -hmm. We was uh, hey, we're adamant, mm -hmm. yeah, chasing after Tyson Fury on Twitter, chasing him. Ah, uh, uh, waiting till the money's right. He's a fucking ducker, bruh. He's the biggest so, one. Yeah, and he did the same thing. And he did the same thing with David Price. He did the same thing with David Price. To be fair, Tyson Fury. Yeah, What's and, and then another thing as well. I reckon Lucas Brown would knock Tyson Fury out. Oh, I don't know about but that. Lucas, Lucas is a hard work, Hey, man. listen, people underestimate him, yeah? I think, but I he's think quite so well, well coordinated you know? for a heavyweight. Fucking right? you know what let, me, and he's let, let me make this point not, real quick. Yeah. 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 Let me make this point this real quick about Tyson Fury, okay. though. Go on, Joker. Uh, let's speak next, E-Boxing. Let me just make this point. Um, With Tyson Fury, he didn't want to fight David Price. He held on for as long as he could, not trying to fight Price, Okay. Price gets sparked out by Thompson, like you guys brought up, and he was in no rush to fight Thompson. He could, that was an easy fight for Fury. He could have went in there and, and say, okay, I beat the guy, I just beat David Price. You know, I beat the guy who beat the guy, and he didn't even do that. So people give Deontay Wilder a lot of cra uh, crap, but at the same time, Tyson isn't that much more impressive. And as far as I'm concerned, to be honest, from my perspective, I don't think either camp really wants that fight. I don't think the Deontay Wilder fight – the, the Deontay Wilder camp really wants the Fury fight. I don't think the Fury fight really wants the Deontay fight. Yeah, All these heavyweights want to do is play the waiting game for the Kliskos to go away. Nobody actually wants to beat the Kliskos. They just want them to go away, you know? That's just my opinion. Yeah, go, Fury mm -hmm. does. Yeah. go on, Mark. What, it's your turn now, uh, mate. Uh, did you want to... Did yeah, I just to, I just yeah. wanted to go back in Sorry, to what Pete said about, about, um, about Brown. And the thing about Brown is this is with no amateur experience whatsoever and he's already got to the commonwealth level that's quite extraordinary yeah he's got and he trains himself he looks Imagine a monster if doesn't he, he gets now a better trainer you know let's say he gets a trainer he gets a good regime going and he and he still works on his skills he could go he could go even further than he is so i don't think beats is far off well we've got we've got umar we've got umar in the chat and he's He's not very happy that we're picking Deontay. He, he thinks Robert Helena should be in it. I'm not sure about that one. But you, Mo, do you want to explain yourself on that one, mate? Yeah, well, I mean, it was funny that Deontay Wilder is being even mentioned in this because, you know, I mean, let's be honest, the guy is a hype job. You know what I mean? Like, who, who did he be, you know, to be, be mentioned in, in, in the next four big guys in the heavyweight division? As well as, you know, Tyson Fury, you know, although he has delivered against anybody, he, he's, he's fought and uh, a much better opposition than Deontay Wilder, but, uh, but Tyson's also been talking himself into the, this big status, you know, he, because he's, a, he's, a, he's a good for boxing. He, there's no question about it. He's a very good because he's a good character yeah, for exactly. boxing. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, minute, but but, 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 to be, but to be mentioned, that's the thing. We we gotta we had we we have to have in boxing some legitimacy, legitimacy or what was the right word? You know, Leg legitimate, legitimate. legitimate. That's the word. Yeah, to to name the next four guys, you know, what I mean, like if, if if like if you look at the the guys, like okay, Robert Helene is right now. He's been his hands been been operated several times, and he's been off from the scene and he hasn't been at all that but if you look at the guy you know 
he he's he's wiped out three former heavyweight world champions. You know what I mean? He, and he totally <laughs> him up when he was up and coming. <laughs> Robert Hellenius is useless. I see him fighting Robert Sherman Hellenius. Griffin, right? Sherman Griffin, right? He, he coming there looking like my granddad. Overweight, like well out of shape from when I saw him fighting. And he nearly knocked Hellenius out. He nearly knocked him out. Yeah. He lost his as well. Hey, how, I tell you what, if Sherman Griffin had trained for three more days and lost a couple more pounds, he would have knocked him out. But Sherman Griffin nearly knocked him out and he was tired himself. He was tired. <laughs> yeah. He was wheezing the he, he couldn't even walk across the ring to finish him off. But you see, the thing is, is that terrible. I, you know, I know, I know about the backgrounds of Hellenius, what's going on in his life, and so on. So uh, he's been through a lot, you know. What I mean, so like he, the, the thing is that he shouldn't, uh, you know, according to the doctors, he shouldn't even be in the ring. You know, he he should should not have taken the fight against Sprott. He definitely should not taken against. Uh, the fight against Chisora. Can you imagine his hamstring or what they call it? You know that the thing that holds the whole hand in, in, in its place. Umar. Well, he should retire. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can't say you can't make excuses exactly. for him and then bring up all his injuries. You know, if the, I think exactly. Tyson Fury could stop him. I think all them guys would stop him, ladies. All of them. He's in the ring for the as money. A, as, he, as there a, is, that means he got in there for the money. Then he got. In, he didn't get in there. To, he, he, and he got. He got a gift decision. Derek beat him, and, and he got the decision. Like he got. The, you know what yes. I mean? So he's in there for the money. You know what I mean? Like, look. End of the day, we're of talking course, about like course, guys contending of, for the course, heavyweight, of, heavyweight of championship. Of course he went. Of course he went there in for the money. But you gotta look at the Hellenius fights, like when he fought against Lyakovich, you know, uh, when he fought Who's against that? Sam P, you know, Samuel oh, Peter. Well, no, but who, Oh, Samuel Peter. Okay, they beat Samuel Peter. Yeah, yeah he, 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 he finished. After, 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 right? after the Klitschko beat him. After the Klitschko beat him. Bro, after Klitschko the Klitschko beat him. After the Klitschko beat him. But if yeah. you, there's nothing you can take away from Hellenius' performance on that night because he was healthy, he was, you know, 100%, and he <laughs> totally finished up. Sacro Peter was fighting for money that day. He was finished. After the Klitschko chewed him up, he was finished. Yeah. To be fair, Umar, to, to be fair, Umar, uh, he, he robbed Derek Chisora as well. Yeah, yeah, they did, but you but you see, he fought with one hand. You got to understand, he fought the whole Derek, through the whole fight with the, one hand. Daniel you Williams see, fought with one arm. Thing. Daniel Williams fought with one arm. And he, and he won his yeah. fight against Mark, 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 Mark Potter and Danny Williams yeah. fought with two arms. Derek <laughs> Chisora <laughs> got back to the two arms. Who's the guy? Who's the guy speaking? You who knows? Um, there's, 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 there's no comparison. Yeah. There's no comparison. Yeah. One at a time, boys, because we're getting we're overlapping each other here. Go on, big squad. What you say? So what? what Uma, just hold what on a sec. Hold, Uma, hold on a sec. While I'm going to let you reply to what Beats has, is going to ask you. Go on, Beats. Yeah. This is one thing. I don't really. Not saying you personally that I don't really like what boxing. If you're going to the ring. And you perform badly, right? And then, then after people say, "Well, you was injured." That's what um, Vladimir Vitali said when he couldn't knock out um, Derek Chisora. You can't come and say you fight, and whatever result is the result, you know? Yeah. He went if he was injured that bad, he went the distance with the injury, and you know he's he is not looking good. That's the bottom line. It's like when David Hay said about his top. Oh, okay, Umar, what did you think about when David Hay said? His toe was why he performed bad against Vladimir Klitschko. What did you think about that? You thought he was a prep. You know, I, yeah? I, I, I know, I know, I know the, if, if the toe was broken, really, you know, I know the real reason why he went in there, that, and that was the money, you know. That, that, That's a lady, you know. Well. If, if, you, if, you, if you've been offered, you know, like, I don't know how much he was making, but like 10 million euros or pounds, you know, to go out there, you know, with one leg, and and then and, and you know, have, have take the risk that you're gonna get uh, battered by the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, which is not a shame for anybody to lose to the you know guy who's undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Would you take that risk? You know, I mean, I think you would take that risk. So so like the same same went with with Hellenius. You know, his stable they wasn't gonna let him to pull out from the fight. You know, they they sold like over four million euros worth of tickets in Hartwell Arena in Helsinki. You know, so well, he wasn't gonna let. If you say this is injuries, 
We have to rule him out then. If you're saying he can't fight because of his injuries, then we just have to... We can't make excuses for him. We rule him out. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 understand, yeah. I understand that, but you, you're forgetting my original point, what I was saying. I was talking about the legitimacy, legitimacy of, of who, uh, who, who has um, won, you know, tougher opponents. And Deontay Wilder has not, you know, beaten anybody, you know? hasn't beaten absolutely anybody with the heartbeat. So so why is Deontay Wilder is being mentioned? You know what I mean? Why, so, why okay. is Deontay Wilder mentioned? Stupid and also I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I bet you any money Hilarious couldn't go three rounds with Deontay Wilder. I bet you what? any money he would have bet he wouldn't go three rounds. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put money on that. Uh, on what? Please tell him again. The ladies wouldn't really survive three rounds with Deontay Wilder. He wouldn't survive three. Ha, did you did you see Helene was performing in his best fights, like against Samuel Peter, against how he ended up Lamont Brewster's career? Did you see those years fights? Ago, years ago, man. Yeah, they were years ago, but that was when he was healthy. That was when he was healthy. The guy is still such a young guy, and he's hopefully gonna get healthy again. You know, so you think, then, so yeah, man, you think Helene could beat the, um, the, the Lamont Brewster that knocked out Vladimir Klitschko? Hell no, he couldn't. First of all, let's be, let's be, let's be, let's be real. There was something very, very dodgy about Lamont Brewster ever knocking out Vladimir Klitschko. Like Klitschko himself oh, said that he was man. poisoned. You know, he, yeah, that's that, that's the reality. Wow, you Vladimir, see, that was yeah. excuses for fighters, man. The you fight, seem to have to talk about fighting the losing. They're losing, and you've if got reasons for all of them. Yeah, I'm not, not going to lie, Omar. I mean, I, I got to say, at the end of the day, man, if you're a fighter and you sign on the dotted line, if you're injured, you go in that fight in that ring injured. That's on you, man. You can't, you don't get to go in there injured and then after the fight say, well, this is why I lost. I mean, you signed the contract, you're a fighter. Uh, it, it's just unfair to take a guy's victory away from him because of an excuse, you know? So I, I, I disagree with that, my friend. But, but, but you see, the thing, the thing is the money is that make such a difference. You know, guys will go there and take the risk, even if they're injured. Right, but that's, when that's, the that's their risk. That's their risk. If you take it because of the money and you lose, look, man, oh, well. Let me tell you, okay, look, look, look. look, look, look. No, 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 if no, I no turn up, about it. If I turn up to Everybody. deliver my parcels tomorrow, yeah, and I fail to deliver the parcels, and, I, and I, then I, I have to go to the, that, that boy with the curly blonde hair, the facey one, and say, oh, boy, I'm a bit tired today, you know. I'm <laughs> sad. <laughs> I'm out. Well, yeah, I, I agree with right. that, man. Hey, I'll tell you guys what, though. I'll tell you guys what. We have gone a, a lot over, man. Um, we definitely want to thank you guys for calling in, but I think we're going to get ready to go ahead and wrap this show up. We've been on for a, a good bit, man. But uh, good debate. Two hours and 30 minutes. One thing what, what I want to say, yeah, guys, keep on promoting that fight for me against Tony Bellew. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's yeah. What we want to see it, Umar, but... Whether Fast Car's up for that fight, well, you know, that's a problem. Fast Car, he's, he's got his own little agenda, and he, Tony Billy will be in there with some bum, I should think. But, yeah, Joker, do you want to wrap things up then? Because it's been a great show. I've really enjoyed myself. It's been good debates, and we all we all disagreed with each other, which is a good thing, because we obviously don't want to agree good. with... Yeah, of course it is. We don't want to agree with each other. Two hours of agreeing with everyone. I mean, fucking hell, that'd be die to listen to so yeah it's been a great show thanks to boxing beats and rhymes for coming on um obviously i'm, I'm a fan of his channel so ch if you want to go on youtube check his channel out it's a really good listen I, I i usually just sit out chill out at night time when i'm about to get in bed put beats on and listen to him for half an hour you should do the same good channel and obviously ej he's always about everyone knows ej we'll speak to him soon and yeah it's been a good show joker do you want to wrap it up yeah, hey, man, a uh, big thank you to the callers for calling in, man. You guys feel free to call in anytime. So shout out to all the callers, shout out to the chat and whatnot. And, um, yeah, I guess we can go ahead and wrap things up, man. So we'll continue this on the next show. You guys be sure to tune, in, tune into the Boxing Union, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Mondays, Eastern time, 10 p.m. to 12 uh, a.m. U.K. time on Mondays. We'll be here every Monday. All right, man, see you guys later. Peace. Yo.
I'm Sugar Ray Robinson, powerful power the best And you overprotected, never been in no real test Mike Tyson, eat your kids for lunch I'm like Billy Pep, I could win a round without throwing a punch Lennox Lewis had a glass jaw If my grandmother hit him on the chin, he probably hit the floor The road of Duran, all-time greatest lightweight Prince Nassim was whack, all the hype was fake Leon Spinks was the ultimate slacker Sugar Ray Leonard was great, but he should've lost to Hagler The seven D's had the best heavyweights From Miley Frazier to George Foreman, there was so many greats Bob Foster hit way too hard He would've put Antonio Tarver and Roy Jones in the graveyard Some of y'all might disagree, but Larry Holmes might have been the best, even better than Ali. Greatest Puerto Rican fighter, Carlos Ortiz. Runner up with Fredo Gomez in the early 80s. Worst Puerto Rican fighter is John Ruiz. Winky Wright beat Shane Mosley, two times for these. Learned that Whitaker was robbed so many different occasions. Mike McCallum represented hard for the Jamaicans. Costa soon made dab through the funky chicken. Years later, Ricky Hatton had Costa Zoo Britain. I ran Barkley, rep the VX. Christy Martin was the first popular fighter of the opposite sex. A lot of punch with a goal repeatedly in the dick Then when he fought Mike Tyson, he bitched out and quit James Tony was a skilled technician Jack Johnson beat white boys and fucked their women Floyd Patterson got knocked out by Sonny Liston Only a yellow always seemed to get the kick decision A Toro Caddy take the best ass whipping Jim Lampy and the rest of the HBO cheerleaders do the most ass kissing They jerk Bernard Hopkins, ruined his 10 year reign They stole his belts from him, gave him to Jermaine But Sealy Giroff nearly murdered Joe Macy Joe Calzaghe annihilated Jeff Lacey John Mugabe's nickname was the Beast Corrales Castillo, the first fight was a masterpiece Julian Jackson crushed Terry Norris We all got knocked out for us Hearns Hagler taught us what the war is Trying to find the next heavyweight great They thought it was Javier Bucci, but he went to jail for rape Bob Abrams a weasel and Don King's evil Floyd Mayweather's good, but he need to fight better people We watched Oscar De La Hoya get rich He nearly outpointed Felix Trinidad, but then he ran like a bitch uh -huh. Barrera Morales, Julio Cesar Chavez Mexican fighters was fucking up mad heads And we never got to see the best Salvador Sanchez Ricardo Lopez retired undefeated Larry Holmes beat Michael Spinks but he got shitted Manny Pacquiao speed is heated, believe it, you eat it Oliver more call, smoke crack and had a nervous breakdown Riddick Bow knocked out Holyfield in the eighth round Jake LaMotta had the best chin When Mike Tyson beat Spinks was his best win. They stopped 15 round fights after Duck Who Kim. The biggest disappointment was probably gold medalist Mark Brillin. Emil Griffith was accused of hanging out with queers. Tony Ayala went to jail for 16 years. Michael Grant swore pitifully. Vito Antifermo was a champ from Italy. Chris Bird beat Vitaly. Fernando Vargas' best win was Ike Corte, who fought the best competition. Juan Laporte. Levander Johnson killed in the ring. R.I.P. Tommy Morrison was diagnosed with HIV. First round. Ernie Shavers finished Kenny Norton Michael Dokes and Tony Tucker was both Coke Snorton Coke Snorton Coke Snorton Coke Snorton Coke Snorton